Oh, right, all right, all right. What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Bronze to GM. We are in Masters League, and there is a lot of evolution happening. We're up against a Masters 3 Protoss player by the name of Militia, who I believe is a bit rusty, so might be an easy match, might be a hard one. We don't really know. First things first, notice we're not drone scouting. And we're going to basically stop drone scouting for this entire league, um, which I think is really cool. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different. Uh, I should be building a 16 hatch, but I sent the drone down a little bit late because I was just having a little bit of a thinky think about what I was going to do. Oh my lord, that's not good, guys. All right, we're going to take this front third. <laughs> Jeebus. This is a rough start. It's a rough start, guys. All right, that is a very late third. We call that a dark uh, natural, a dark expand. It's where... You forget to send your drone out on time, so you take it at the very last second. Now, I am building that spawning pool a little bit earlier than normal. Normally, this would be 18 gas, 17 pool. The reason I'm building it a little bit early um, is just because this is so late, that hatchery, that I'd, I'd rather at least get this queen out a little bit closer to on time in my main. Start getting injects going, even though my cycles will be out of sync. I'm a Masters player now. I can handle my injects being out of sync. Uh, other than that, we're going to be going single Evo melee upgrades as the priority. Uh, a lot of people will probably be wondering, and notice we needed 19 Overlord, because this natural, this Hatchel's, uh, the natural is so late, so we, we need to make sure we go for it that way. I'm just going to push these Adepts out. Notice the Overlord sat above the third base as well. Let's check my camera locations are good. Third base, fourth base, and probably fifth down the bottom. Build a queen, build two Zerglings, and remember the Overlord. We're still going to follow the same expansion pattern. I think you can even pull this off at... Uh, pro play the just try to dive through their base scouting pattern i guess is what we could call that start a queen there immediately looks like the cyber core is just finishing this looks like a pretty normal expansion we're gonna pull two workers off gas we're just gonna leave one mining just to give us a little bit of gas flexibility uh if we need it okay warp gate is spinning straight away which means it's probably not a stargate build but that's fine we're gonna go through the main find that second pylon anyway and confirm now, obviously, at this point, you do want to make sure you get that base up. We're just chasing this probe away with our Zerglings. And we're going to go for that third hatchery. So, the opening is not too different. Um, I would still go 32 third hatch if it was a bit more of a normal build. But in this case, I just kind of grabbed one of the passing drones and did it. And that is a Stargate build. Okay, no worries. Let's go straight for a third queen, guys. Uh, and let's make sure we're building extra overlords. Because we built the hatchery, so we need the queen, then the overlord. And we'll build another Overlord straight away as well. Now, I don't know if there's two Adepts coming or not, right? So, luckily, we didn't see any Adepts coming across. Otherwise, I would have immediately built more Zerglings. But I'm still going to build up to like six or eight Zerglings anyway, because this base is exposed, right? We don't want that to be out there. Now, this one here, we've got Lizzie. This is not Cersei. This is an immediate Freddy. That's an immediate Freddy defense queen, right? The queens are going to be very fluid in this early game, especially with that Stargate out there. And good thing I did build those Maulings. Let's build two more so we can get a couple more out here and we can make these both Freddy Mercury, okay? So building more queens. We do need to build a Spore at 3 minutes 40 in the main base, guys, is the way you do that. And that's really good for me because we can kill these Adepts now. So queens come back. We can just A-move our uh, Lings. Put guys back on gas at about four minutes. And let's make sure we uh, guard this mineral line here, hey? We're also going to build a spore there because main base is saturated. Third is saturated. Well, that means, guess what? We're about to rally to our natural. But opponent probably has oracles, so we've got to be careful. Now, it looks like our lings chased all the way to the natural. I don't know if they killed the adepts or not. Let's just put lings on the bases, one outside. Bring the lings back. And let's keep on macroing, Okay. Now, obviously, this is first game today, so I'm a little bit rusty. It's kind of like a warm-up game slash instructional game. But uh, we can make a spore there as well. And uh, that's going to be one spore in each base. And a total of one, two, three, four... Yeah, we're going to make six queens in a second, okay? Now, we did see a third base, so we're going to put one more ling out there. Bring back this last ling, build a few more. And uh, next up, guys, Evo Chamber, second gas, Bane Nest. Now, this is interesting, right? Versus Stargate Branch, we want to do this a lot later when we have about eight drones on the third base. Now, we only actually have five technically, but you guys can kind of uh, see the point, right? The idea is we've got a lot of drones about to rally out to it, so I knew that I was pretty close to that number of eight drones and, in fact, about to jump above that count. Now, let's spread creep on these bases, and you can see we've got three defense queens, guys, and three injecting queens. Inject, inject, inject. Build some overlords, build some drones, or the other way around if you prefer that. 
and we're going to reset the rally points. Why? Because this one, we're taking all this. We want to go melee, and we can get a lair as well. Um, I didn't really write down the lair timing in the build, so if you guys could remind me after this game, those who are watching live, I write that down so it's kind of like, hey, after we start plus one, we can, we can go straight away for that. Now, ideally, we still are going to go quick fourth and fifth base, even if we don't end up going for the double uh, macro hatchery. All right. So, guys, let's go. We've got one, two, three, four, five. Now, we've only got two gases right now. Should we go up to more or should we just mass slings is, is kind of the question. And this is where the build is going to be kind of interesting. I'm still going to go the double macro hatch, even though I went fourth and fifth base a little bit earlier. We're higher level. We realize the fourth and fifth base have more potential because I can drone those up if I choose to. They are a bit more exposed, though. Harder to defend. So there's obviously a give and take with everything. Triple Oracle coming in, guys. Okay, we're going to bring all of our queens over here. Luckily, I'm massing Zerglings. Now, it's easy to worry about that and go, oh, God, defend the base. That's one of two expansions. I don't need it. It's not high priority. I have so many hatcheries, and I have a fourth base down the bottom. So we don't need that at all. So I'm A-moving my Lings across the map. Queens are going to go here. I'm using my Rally to deal with these guys. We can just cancel that if we need to. And try to always surround the shield battery as one of your highest priorities. And there we go, guys. Looks like we lost a drone there on the gas. Inject, inject, inject. And we can aim move those guys. So the big decision making that we made here, which was pretty advanced, I guess, is don't defend that hatchery. But what you want to realize is that's not really... Unless I saw a big scary army that was going to kill me, I was always going to be doing backstabs instead of doing it the other way. So these links can just run home and we can make Bane link speed, inject, inject, inject. Mutation. We can make one big round of drones for this base or we can go for gases, which is actually more what we'd want to be doing, right? Because we want to go hydras, yeah? So we want to go hydras, get plus two melee, put some more link spotters out to see if there's an attack coming and that should be beautiful, a beautiful. Creep, creep, creep. Notice we're going top to bottom the whole way, all the way across. And we've got lots of energy. So we can dump about six injects there, six injects there, six injects there, six injects there. And that's going to give me what we call unlimited lava, guys. All right, inject, inject, inject. Build some hydras, just about eight of them for now. The rest is on zerglings. We can get the move speed. We'll queue up Groove Spines in a moment. I'm trying to build more Overlords as well. But of course, we are a little low on Lava at this moment because we've been massing the Zerglings. We're going to spread Creep top to bottom, guys. As always, top to bottom, go all the way around. And we can make an Overseer as well. We could also make an Overseer just to scout the opponent's production. We should have been doing that already. But he was kind of attacking us and showing us what his army was. So we didn't really need to, right? Uh, we're going to make a few more Hydras, and then the rest is going to be Ling Bane. And we need a lot of Banelings to make. Bane speed's done. And plus two melee is going to be a natural moment to start rolling Banelings into people's bases. Now, that's walled off. So we want to use this top angle to roll some Banelings into this mineral line, okay? Other than that, nothing but Lings, nothing but Banes. And uh, let's keep it going. All right. So we're going to grab the Hydras, control click, and go after these Oracles. Okay, guys? Wait. <laughs> the Zealots with it as well, apparently. Okay. Alright, let's try and chase this army down, guys. There's not that many Archons yet, so if we can surround them, that'll be big. And these Banelings, we can just click in the mineral line. Or even click on the cannon that's building, okay? Alright, these guys are going to go down here and start sieging this wall off. We're not ready to fight yet. Don't get excited just because we routed his army, guys. Make Banelings. And we're also going to drone up my fourth. So we're going to build 16 drones for my fourth. That's going to take me to 80 workers. I'm going to transfer these guys to the fifth, okay? I'm going to build some spores on those bases. Inject, inject, inject. Banelings ended up doing nothing because I just crashed them into their army without watching. I should have attacked with these guys first, so his army pulled down, then gone in with the Banelings. Now, notice these units are derping, so move the Hydras forward by control clicking, guys. And I don't think we really want to fight in there. We'll split some Lings off and just kind of dump those by going Alt-0. The other units are just going to go to the other side. There we go. I and mean, we can blow up those zealots. That should be cool. A few more hydras, but mostly lings and banes, guys. And uh, what we're going to do is we'll split this army to the north. And then this army here. And you can see he's got a pretty good force. He's making lots of archons, all this sort of stuff. Inject, inject, inject. 
And uh, we're going to try and pull back and defend on that side if possible. Make some more Banes there. Make some more Banes down here as well. Notice sometimes I control click. Sometimes I just tab to select the Banelings. Uh, it's really up to you. We want to swap into range upgrades at this point. You might be thinking, isn't it time for lair tech? When do we, when do, we do the lair tech? Lair tech is not necessary. But if your gas is getting a bit low, you're up at 80 drones, you can afford to go to 8 gases. It's just not as big a priority as keeping your mineral income up. Okay, guys? All right, let's try and bash through down here. I think we've got a pretty good Baneling count. Yeah, there's the Banelings. They're just hanging behind a little bit. All right, guys. So once again, distract here. Let's go for it. Just going to try and move in these Hydras. And the other guys are going to A move on the minimap on the other side. Not even focusing on it. Just click the Banelings in the mineral line. And even those two Banelings just cleared his whole worker count out. Now that army, his army's there. So run those guys away. Oh my god. Transfuse. 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 Very lucky my queens were right there, guys. Very lucky, but otherwise we would have just run the drones away. Alright, now the problem is he's still got a giant army. So we're going to make a silly amount of Banelings. And we're going to collapse from two sides. Now, what we're going to do here is, because we see he's out of formation, we're just going to grab a bunch of stuff, trying to get as many Banes as we can. And we're going to roll those into those High Templars, seeing them all exposed. Now, notice we're bringing the top army in behind him, and then these guys in from this side. But we're not going to wait, and the reason we're not waiting is just because he kind of stumbled into our army. And we said, okay, you're on creep. GG, well played. All right, let's 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 go back here and really refine this. Because there's so many changes with, like, they're not scouting and this sort of stuff that that's a big issue. So, first things first, he blocked our expansion. Now, the question is, did he actually block that early enough? Where if I sent a drone down earlier, would it have been blocked? So, remember, to send your drone down. We're doing 16 hatch now because we're not drone scouting. It does change up the opening a little bit. If he's not here by 48 seconds, then we could get the hatchery down. So, I think this was a late block from my opponent militia 48 48 yes i could have actually built the hatchery on time guys this is a longer map they need to send the probe very early if they want to actually be able to get this down so <laughs> my fault for sending this drone down too late to even build a 17 hatchery you can see even a 17 hatchery almost would have got down in time and he would have barely blocked it right so just send that drone down on time. You might be wondering, well, when do you send it? Well, if you're doing a 16 hatch, it's really simple. It's always one of these two drones that pops. So 13 Overlord, and then you build those two drones uh, right after the Overlord pops, of course. And then you just always rally one of those eggs to your expansion, and it's usually going to time out pretty well. Funnily enough, I think they were a little bit late to build this game as well, because you can see they're popping well after 200 minerals. Which tells, it just shows my opening was a little bit off. I think I made a few little mistakes with that. Anyways, past that point, let's 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 lock in a few of these other details that I haven't written down yet. All right. So in terms of lair timing, um, yeah, lair starts with 100 gas after starting melee plus one melee. So let's also add a little thing: attack timings, bane speed equals bane run buys should happen, right? But also plus two melee. Uh, is a, a, you know, a good timing to attack. Otherwise, once we have 15 Hydras and uh, a big pack of Speedbane circling with them, that's a great time to start forcing fights. And usually, that means split the army in half and attack two sides. Or split Speedbane run by off uh, while distracting and skirmishing with main army, right? So this opening was a little bit scuffed, but uh, notice that really uh, we're going to be going down a very different branch once we see the tech. And that's the main thing in those notes. So immediately at this stage, we see a Stargate, we know we're going down a very different opening branch. And that's that's really the biggest thing here, guys. Um, so what, what, what are these two different branches? Well, verse Stargate, we want to go straight to six queens, right? And uh, we want to even prioritize, you know, them as defensive queen, you know, as, as, as Freddie Mercury defense slash creep queens. Um, you can still inject when they first pop out for sure. So what you often are doing with pretty much all of your early queens, maybe the one in the main stays injecting. It's up to you how you do it exactly. You want to find your own rhythm. Your queens pop out, um, and then you're kind of like, oh, you 
add onto the, you know, do an inject, add onto the Freddie Mercury key. Shift four, right? And you keep doing that so that you've always got plenty of queens ready to respond to any oracles. So this queen here, right? I do an inject, but then immediately she's on control group four. And I start another queen that's going to become the new, the new Cersei, right? And then she's going to inject and she's also going to become the new, the new Mercury, right? The new, the new creep slash defense queen. So you're going to see me doing that a lot until I'm up to six queens, three defense and three injecting, right? We've got the, the Lizzie Cersei Latifah on injects, which are actually the last queens that pop out. Other than Lizzie, who I guess, I guess I leave Lizzie in the main pretty much the whole time on her own injecting but yeah freddie mercury gets out way faster that blocks double adept first cvp it helps you run forward similar to dealing with hellions remember this is the trident this is the spear that stabs them if they try to maneuver past the zerglings and the net that catches them and remember you want to build at least four zerglings per adept i like to build a few extra so i go up to 12 zerglings six zerglings per adept and that allows me to even chase them. Now, did I actually kill them? I A moved. I didn't look at this at all, guys. Looks like I got one of them and the other one did escape. So hats off to the opponent. Turned on his Oracle, got a few Ling kills, and then I tried to run them away. But that was that was pretty damn nice. All right. So notice here as well, we're kind of like, okay, queens are popping, queens are popping. Now, what about spore timing? We built a spore crawler in the main at 3 minutes 40, guys. 3 minutes 40. But yeah, 3.40 Spore Crawler. And when there's eight drones on the third base, we're going to go Bane Nest, Second Gas. So notice this is delayed from what we used to do. The Second Gas Bane Nest. It's very delayed from what we uh, we used to do, right? Massively delayed. So we're droning. When do we add these extra spores? Now, you can completely skip those spores. That's what we call the Polish Gambit. The idea between completely skipping Spore Crawlers is you need to make sure... You build an extra queen in the main a lot earlier. And basically at about four minutes when the first oracle can arrive, you need two queens here, two queens here. Because two queens can defend an oracle with minimal damage. If you see the angle the oracle's coming from, you always want to move your queens forward to start shooting it as early as possible. It's called the Polish Gambit because if they micro very well around your queens, if they find their way in, you don't have the safety net of the spore crawlers. Now keep in mind, you can take a lot of damage if you skip the spore crawlers because spore crawlers cost 75 minerals and a drone. So you're killing your own drones by building spores. But this is the more standard safe way to do it. I'm just introducing that concept since you're masters players now, you guys can choose how you want to play the game. What we're going to do though, is we're going to build these spore crawlers just a little bit later. Essentially, whenever you feel like your queens aren't going to be guarding a mineral line. So for me, you're going to see that's about four minutes, uh, about four minutes, uh, 10 seconds is usually when I'm going to go Spore Crawler um, natural, and then I'll drop the Spore in the third later. Now, that's a bit complicated, right? So I'm going to simplify that now, right? This is me doing what I normally do in a pro game and staggering the Spores out. Let's simplify that a little bit and just say, yeah, about uh, 410, let's Spore Crawler there. Because you're building six Queens nonstop, and you got to build a few Zerglings potentially. It's going to be a little while until your third's getting saturated. But basically, the moment you're actually rallying drones to that third, build a Spore Crawler there straight away. That's the rule. So, and, and we'll build it in the third base as well. So, the moment we build drones to rally to our third base, add two Spores in the other bases. Now, it's up to you how that syncs up in your build and your rhythm, how you like to play as a player. But that's what I'm going to be doing from now on in my games, guys. Every time I kind of go, okay, main saturated, I've put back on gas. I should also say four minutes back on gas, hey. Back on gas. Uh, and we're going to leave one... Are we going to leave one worker on gas in this matchup, guys? I don't think we really need to. It does help us with our gas a little bit to get that Evo Chamber upgrade going. Yeah, I think we're going to leave one on gas. Uh, leave one worker on gas when pulling off. That's just going to help our build so that our lair and plus one melee aren't too delayed. It gives you a nice little bit of flexibility. That's going to be a ZVP thing we do. Uh, the moment we build drones to rally to our third base, add two spores in the other bases. I think that works great. And then eight drones on the third would do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Four minutes back on gas. Yep, yep, yep. Very nice. Okay, that should work out really well. Okay, so from there, you've got your six queens. Um, obviously, because you're building spores and queens, you will get a little bit of lava stacking up. There's, it, it can take you a little bit longer to drone this base up, but you're still, you're, you're, your goal here is still to drone this mineral line as quickly as possible, guys. You really want to be flooding out the workers uh, as much as you possibly can. 
Um, as the Protoss player will often get ahead of you in the workers. Notice my opponent's at 42 probes. I was only at 38, right? And that's not a great work account for me. And I definitely can push it a little bit harder. And I will in future games. I was floating a lot of money this game. Uh, obviously talking you guys through it, I, I missed an inject or two. And we're still kind of figuring out some of the details that I would need to elucidate for you guys that I can't really figure out until I'm actually playing the build at this level. You know, I can practice it at my level. I can practice it at, at various things, but... It's only when I'm really doing this show sometimes that I figure things out, which is why I, uh, I wanted to, to get this here in person. So we could drone it up a little bit quicker, but we want to get all three mineral lines. And um, we're still going to do the same sort of two gas setup, right? Where it's like, okay, so plus one melee, first hundred gas, then we go to the lair. Um, if you're taking a lot of damage from Adepts and Oracles, don't get me wrong, guys. It's more important for you to just keep droning and spending your lava than it is to get layer plus one melee. These are these are bonus things. As always, the priority in StarCraft is keep spending your lava, keep droning in the early game. But now that we've got three mineral lines up, I'm on 57 workers, that's when we can kind of go for the, oh, okay, double macro hatch, fourth and fifth base. Now, I go fourth and fifth base early this time. If you prefer to do double macro hatchery first, that's what you're used to, go for it, guys. There's nothing wrong with still going double macro hatchery. Like I said, it's just an option. You take these two bases, it can be really nice because then they're like, oh, I'm going to cancel this hatchery. You don't really care about that hatchery. And that actually opened up the opportunity for me to basically get a free win in this game. Because I saw, oh, you're doing one of these little gateway adept oracle pressures, but I know you've got a fast third. So I don't even think this is an all-in for a moment. Why, guys? Because we don't see any sign of an all-in. Why? If we saw eight zealots, we'd be like, oh God, even if they're not fast zealots, We'd be like, well, Charge is probably about to finish. This is a big surprise Zealot Oracle in. He might not have even probed up that third base. Oh, God. If there's like eight, nine Stalkers, same thing. If there's eight or nine Adepts, same thing. But what we see here is a hodgepodge. What's a hodgepodge, guys? A hodgepodge is a My random way. clump of stuff. That's what a hodgepodge is. Two Adepts, two Stalkers. Is that... This is clearly just units that are left over from the early game, right? That he's just like, ah, yeah, we'll, we'll go see what we can do. So he's trying to kind of get free damage Taking advantage of the fact I don't have creep over there. My queens can't move over there very easily. You can go kill a hatchery. Stop me from droning. Make me panic. But uh, I'm like, as long as it's not an all-in, in general, what do we do, guys? Well, if our zerglings surround that, the oracles will turn their lasers on. My lings just have to run away. So instead, I took every zergling, and I do what I always do. Alt, seven, and I just click him in the third base. I didn't even realize he was taking a fourth. I could have canceled that as well. And, uh, and then I've got my other zerglings, which are still on number two. And they're going to come in and, uh, and, and you know, number two being my main army key. So number one for most players. And we're, we're going to be able to defend our base and do crazy damage to his economy, right? And this was basically game over because we, we just do so much here, right? We depower these three gates. We kill 14 probes. I mean, this is just such a huge advantage. At a point where if we gave him another minute to get his fourth established, Militia was going to rip our, rip our manhood off. Um... If you, you know, you let a build like this get going, it's going to be a big problem for you. Now, behind that, we're going to go Hydroden, plus two melee, Bane speed, and then for extra gases, we could just keep massing Ling Bane and attacking, and it might work. We might even just straight up be able to win the game, but I figured we already did some good damage. It's always nice if you're doing damage, drone behind it, add the tech, go to the next step, and it's the same next step we were using in Diamond 1, which is get six gases, go Hydra Bane. Now... As the game goes on, we're going to drone a fourth base, but we don't initially. We stay at 66 workers initially. As you get better at macroing, if you find, oh, I really could use more money, you might choose to, like, in a situation like this, say, I'm already ahead, I feel confident, I can go straight to 80 workers and then just have endless My units man. cascading across the map. That's absolutely viable. Um, because I was pretty slow to transition to the gases, we are a little low on the gas count. That is one thing. So you could argue... Um, either get those the gas transition a little bit faster or get some extra gases when you you know on the fourth base when you're drawing that either way from here it's pretty much the same thing always which is split up your hydra bane and attack so there's a few different patterns we've written those in the document attack with three most of your army here do a speed bane run by up here or split half your army attacks here half your army attacks up here and you just want to jump between them double tap two double tap three and a lot of people panic like i can't multitask no but it's really friggin simple until you're playing god tier players whenever you do that you're just gonna see oh their whole army's at the top run away with that army you just click it back two three four screens on the minimap and the other army you, you micro so you don't actually want to actively multitask right and if they're really well split up on both sides maybe you just pull both sides back right 
and then you then you kind of try to maybe group your whole army and collapse on one side together hoping that they're still spread across and their armies you know you can separate them right there's a lot of different ways you could do it, but too many players are like, oh, attacking on two sides means constantly jumping between two different locations and actively managing them. Very rarely is that what you need to do as a player. Don't get me wrong, Maru does that, Hero does that. Very few players who aren't, you know, top pro gamers are microing two, three places at once constantly. It's more about setting things up. So this Bailing run by wasn't good. I mentioned this in game. These guys should have attacked this wall. His army would have moved south, and then that would have been a much more effective Bailing roll in. Yeah? So that would have been way better. Uh, we're not going to go Hive at all, really, I don't think, unless, unless we're absolutely forced to. But that would rely on us probably being a bit behind in the game. So it just kind of depends how the games go. All right, guys, we're playing Soxie Bugwing, a Masters 3 on EU turn, who um, hasn't played that much on NA, which is why they've only got a Diamond Border. But uh, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Zerg versus Terran, I'm really curious to see how these changes go. So... I think we really count that first game of Bronze to GM as a, a kind of crappy, scrappy warm-up game, guys. There's so many details that I've, I've got to do a lot of reviewing and you guys asking questions about things. And, uh, I mean, it's always the viewers asking questions and pointing things out and going, that doesn't make sense to me. That allows me to explain things better. But, uh, essentially, what we're going to be doing here is trying to show you guys, okay, number one, no scouting. So that's going to give us a bit more minerals. That's really going to help the opening. Uh, let's also grab one of these drones and rally down there. Um, I think we're going to go like that. Actually, no, we'll probably go fourth there, fifth there. I don't want to be too committed to one side. And for some reason, that drone was a little bit late as well. Just by one or two seconds, but still just something to keep in mind. Uh, Overlord likes to sit outside our base, of course, guys. Oh, no. You go there. And then we want to go 18 gas, 17 pools. So the first drone you build off the hatchery rallies to that patch that only has one guy on it. And then these two, you want to rally out and build the gas and the pool. So you go gas, 18, pool 17. Now, if you want, uh, you can build the pool like there so that like Reapers and Hellions can't really circle the mineral line. Like if it's flush between the, the edge and the minerals, blocks them off. But that's okay either way. All right, guys. So we're going to be droning up with this gas. Um, as I said, other than that, like what is the real change? The only real change with ZVT is we're going to be delaying our Baneling Nest and our second gas, which is what we're doing generally. So we're not just like, I always make safe safe gas Baneling Nest timing, right? Um, but that is going to come with a problem. If you don't have a safe Baneling Nest timing in ZVT, like, well, how do you defend? And that's why we're going to build Queens. Freddy Mercury is going to get expanded to a whole goddamn marching band in Zerg vs. Terran. We're going to have a bloody parade is what we're going to have, guys. All right, hatchery's finished. Tell that guy to return minerals, build two queens, build four links, okay? All right, this overlord's going to go back here to the pillar. And we're going to send this drone out to the third base straight away. Let's pull guys off gas here, guys. Start link speed. We want to fully pull off gas in Zerg vs. Terran because minerals is everything we're gonna be building eight queens like i said we do not need gas now hold on a second i see a blue dot coming into my main base and that tells me wait a second why am i can't yeah i don't like my opponents being blue guys i like them to be red anyway let's build that third base there nice and early now normally we probably want to delay that till 32 but because i saw the reaper heading in that direction that's why i took that early okay so you can still do it the other way totally fine Notice we're also going to spread creep straight away. Why are we spreading creep straight away? What the hell, pig? Aren't we meant to inject? Nope. We built the queen and the overlord now as well. Those were a little delayed from the third hatchery because we took it early and we needed to drone up desperately afterwards. Keep in mind, that was just us adjusting to the reaper trying to get the block. We send the drone early so that it doesn't get caught inside our base. And then if the reaper's heading there to block it, we're happy to throw that down early, even if it slows down us building the drones a little bit. And there we go, guys. Inject, inject. Let's still grab these three drones, put them back on gas in the main, because first lava inject back on gas. Same as always. It's only ZVP where we really delay that versus the uh, versus the Stargate. And we're building a few more overlords to put out on the edges. And we're just going to keep building queens from non-stop. At this point, it's non-stop queens. So that queen comes to the front. This queen is going to spread creep and come to the front. We're going to spread that creep around the edges of our main base. All right, we're going to actually try and chase him down. Not many uh, Zergs build their link speed so fast these days, so that's cool. And we're going to keep all of our queens on one control group, um, even though if you guys are already used to the advanced two queen, queen control group method, then that's totally fine. We're droning, we're droning, and we can also grab two of those drones, send them to the third. 
All right, guys, feeling pretty good. So we want to be mostly saturated. Bring this queen down to the front. Um, we want to be mostly saturated on minerals on our third base before going the game failing mess gas transition. Let's build another creep tumor there as well as inject that base. Yes, these are defense queens, but that's okay. Now let's send this overlord through. We're a little bit late on that. Let's build a few more lings as well. And look at that, guys. Oh, okay. So we're, we've got a liberator coming in. So we're just going to build a spore behind each base. And we probably would have done that anyway if we confirmed that there was Hellions being built. Because if they've got an early factory, then they probably have that too. Now, all of our queens are still going to stay out front, guys. I think I saw some Hellions maybe out there. I'm not sure. But we've just got one queen here. She's going to go. And we're just droning, building overlords. Droning, droning, droning. And there we go, guys. Run those drones away. They move the queens and lings, send the drones back to mine. Now, what happened in the main? Because we knew there was a liberator there. It looks like the liberator must have died, guys. I'm going to rebuild all of my zerglings right now. And we're going to build one more queen there. This queen can join our defense crew. And let's spread some creep, spread some creep, spread some creep. Okay, guys, let's get back on track with our economy. So, in this matchup, what we want to do now is we want to say fully saturated. Okay, we can get that second gas and baneling nest. Fantastic. We can then, after that, go double Evo, Lair, double Macro Hatch, fourth and fifth base, right? That's standard stuff that we always do, okay? Bring my lings over whenever we see those Hellions poking in. Be ready to surround those. Whew! All right, fourth base, fifth base, and the double Macro Hatchery as well. I have no idea what my work account is. So we want to check that. 53 is a little low, guys. 53 is a little low. Inject, inject, inject. Uh, my camera locations are out of order there. That was kind of weird. Anyways, uh, let's build some drones for the gas. Just hold down that drone key in general, really. Control click the hatcheries, shift one. Fourth base, shift one. Fifth base, shift one. All right. Creep, creep, creep. Creep, creep, creep. Creep, creep, creep. Creep, 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 creep. All right, let's get one, one upgrades. And uh, what else are we doing here, guys? Well, we're very high on workers now, but we're only on two gases. So we're gonna need more gases. And remember, we do want Baneling Speed, but we also want a few more drones on Minerals there. And we want to take these gases so we can go four gas. I think it was five gas with Infestors that we like to play. Inject that, inject that. We're getting a little bit chaotic with my macro, guys, because I'm not used to explaining this while playing this sort of build. I'm going to slow it down and be more organized on those macro cycles after this one. Um, we're just trying to get my brain connected uh, to my hands because normally I do macro a little bit more chaotically these days. All right, big attack coming, guys. We're going to make a lot of Banelings. And because we saw Widow Mines, we need an Overseer. That's very important. So we're, we don't have 50 gas. There we go. Overseer's morphing. Going to bring our Lings down here. We're going to try and transfuse, guys. And we're just going to try and pull back as needed. And we're just transfusing and now coming forward with all of our lings and banes all at once. And luckily, luckily he messed up his, his micro a little bit there. Because that was getting a little bit messy. Inject, inject, inject. Build, build lings, build banes. So, always keep making bane lings. Whenever they're attacking you in your face like that, build lings, build banes. Respread creep, also very important. Now we're going to try and stack some injects there. Looks like he's being annoying. So whenever your opponent keeps attacking, remember that game we played last week on uh, Altitude? We're going to take every Ling. We're just going to attack his natural. Alt zero. We're going to keep building Zerglings at home. If we lose that base, it's not the end of the world, okay? Inject, inject, inject. Build Zerglings. We've got a lot of injects popping out right now, guys. Build Overlords. Build more Zerglings. We're going to make an Infestation Pit. This base, I actually accidentally droned that up, guys. I didn't even mean to. Oh, check this out, guys. Look at this. All right, so we can also kill some of these engineering bays, maybe? Now, what's happening over there? Oh, 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 shit. He's coming. Build some more queens. Banelings are going to roll into his army. Remember the power of the backstabs, guys. It's all to force them to, uh, to, to YOLO at us, right? That's the whole reason. Now, I just built a bunch more queens. So, inject, shift four. Inject, shift four. And as long as I've got a queen building, that's okay. Inject, shift four. So, now I'm back to a full queen complement. I can spread creep, and we can spread right to left. Right to left, right to left, right to left. Whoo, okay, cool. So he defended that, guys. What are we going to do? We're going to once again control click all the Zerglings, send those out, Alt 7. And next time he attacks me, we're going to send the, we're going to morph Banelings, we're going to crash in with Ling Bane next time, not just that, okay? 
Now we bought ourselves room. So what are we going to do? Don't feel like you need to go win the game. Make 2-2. Two, two. Transfer work. It's to the fifth base. Inject, inject, inject. We can make pathogen glands. He's attacking again. So remember, this is what Terran players do, guys, is they, they, they charge to their death. you got to pull back and only engage if they're really, really coming for you. Now, my banelings are up front, so that was a problem, guys. You want to try to... If you can split individual zerglings, that's good. But only if there's nothing else going on, okay? These guys are going to make some banes. These guys are going to make as many banes as we can. Because he's trying to just bait us in and wear us down with this Widow Mind push. Inject, inject, inject. And if we can just pull these queens back. Keep dropping these transfusers. Alright, we're just going to crash into him now because he's being so annoying, guys. I think he might be going home, but that's okay. Let's click in there and we're going to split some of these units into the third mineral line. Some of those units just go for the surround. We can click on that. Click the things in there. All right. Oh, not my best. All right, guys. I think these guys are doing really well. Let's just keep going back. And remember, what do we do at home? More Banelings. Inject, inject, inject. More Flings, more Banes. So what do you want to do, guys? Let's just grab a bunch of Banelings. And you just want to click them through their army and then go look elsewhere. Did they kill stuff? Maybe, maybe not. You want to go inject, do other stuff. What do we do? Make more Banelings. What do we do? Okay, this time he's YOLOing on creep. We can actually attack that with the whole army. The great thing is if you force them to shove in like this, they can't have a nice setup. They can't have a nice spread or Widow Mines or any of that stuff, guys. We're going to aim with our Queens here to stop this drop. Pull those drones back. And notice he can drop on the low ground. So we're going to aim move to the low ground. And then we're going to box off the army. Aim move. Alt 7. So this is now... Alt 7 is now a drop defense squad. And the main army is continuing to here. So these guys are just going to stay in the main. Okay? You guys go back there. Inject, inject, inject. Let's finally build those infestors, which he hasn't given me time to do just yet. Now, because his drop's leaving, I'm going to grab this and bring it back to my main army. Actually, you know what? I'll grab these guys. Let's do more backstabs. They've been winning us the game. So let's send that up. And let's make sure my opponent doesn't have any bases. Let's do all this. Spread some creep around. Now, we desperately need more bases ourselves, right? We're spending all of our money on Lings and Banes right now. Okay. I think we need Overlord Speed and more Overseers just in case. Alright, let's go, guys. Just rolling small squads of Ling Bane in. It's usually going to be efficient. Because they just can't get big hits no matter what happens. And I'm going to try and chase. I think I got the numbers here that it should be okay. Even though it's mostly Banelings, we need more Zerglings to make this worth it. Alright, so we're pulling back with these guys. Pull, pull back, pull back, pull back. So we don't have to watch it. Alright. Click in there. Grab some links. Shift, box, some banelings. Go there. Alright, those guys should ruin whatever's left of my opponent's economy. And these guys can route him and hopefully take up this planetary on the right side. Let's go do that. Put our queens here. And it looks like there is no planetary, so I think we should be able to win. Alright, inject, inject, inject. That one can take off our number four key. So I just remade my number four. And you can see there, that was a very cool high intensity pressure from my opponent. But the problem that we really faced there or that he faced was just that backstabs were always going to cause cause issues because you need to backstab a Terran player. If you're playing Ling Bane, if you just sit there and let them set up a perfect spread and headbutt into it, you are playing on the Terran's terms. And it was a pretty annoying first push did he his micro mess up yes absolutely but your instincts need to be to backstab and this is why this is something i could have even already remember what we did way back in gold league was once we're massing zerglings and we're on that production which i over droned this game guys i went too high on drones because i accidentally had rallied all these drones to my fourth i set my rally point to my fourth base before adding my gases which is a big mistake so i'm up like 10 drones uh 12 drones actually from where i was meant to be right so I should have had more Ling Bane, but then my Lings could have already been waiting out there. And the moment I see him on my doorstep, I could have just A-moved Lings into like his natural and third from like out to the left. And this is even easier for me, right? And that makes a massive, massive difference. Bezos box. So, um, yeah. Do we make something apart from Ling Bane on 5 gas? So yeah, we're meant to add Infestors, but if your opponent's in your face this hard, just more Ling Bane is the answer, right? It's about using your Ling Bane well. Too many people are like, I need Hydras, I need Lurkers, I need Muters, I need Ultras, I need Ravagers. The answer is use your Ling Bane correctly. If you're playing Ling Bane, the core of your army is Ling Bane. It is what wins you the game or loses you the game depending on how you use it. 
And a lot of people go, well, I'm behind. I need other units because Ling Bane's not efficient. And I go, heck no. Ling Bane is the most efficient composition in the game. It is what you mass to make comebacks. But you have to use it in the correct way. You need enough of it. If you don't have enough Ling Bane and you're way behind, you will start to get this feeling like, I'm always behind, I'm always in the back foot, Ling Bane's so bad, oh, I need other units. But it's like, hey, wait a second. You need to you need to fix your openings, you know, you need to not fall so far behind and that sort of stuff. So, let's once again reiterate what the uh, technique is for dealing with these sort of pushes where the Terran just keeps parading and setting up this pre-spread and trying to bait you into it, guys. Let's try and remember what that is. Where's CDT? All right, eight queens. Bane Nest and Second Gas will be delayed until we're mostly saturated minerals in our third base, and we'll rely on queens for defense. And then after we do that, of course, we'll go double Evo plus Lair. And then we can go, of course, you know, fourth and fifth hatchery, macro hatch. Basically, all the same stuff we normally add, right? Now... When we feel safe, add three gases and drone them up. This will jump us from 54 drones to... And you might be a bit higher, because if you're just holding the drone key down, obviously you're going to over drone, right? Like in this game, I think I was at 58 or something, right? Because it's better to have more drones than less. So I say 54, because that's three mineral lines and two gases, guys. But... Maybe you've got 25 drones in your third base. Oh, I, I built nine extra workers accidentally. That's fine. You're up on uh, 60, 63 drones already. That's fine. You've already got the drones ready to put on gas once you take those gases, which is great, right? So when we feel safe, add three gases and drone them up. Um, three gases. Infestation pit. This will jump us from 54 drones to 63. If the game drags on, add 16 workers to get to 80. 80 drones, right? Um, but essentially, you've got three different points where you are making army, right? And and kind of assessing the situation. So to summarize that, so to summarize, you're making units and assessing, perhaps setting up backstabs, etc. at these points, right? 54 drones, two gases. 63 drones, 5 gases, and then 79, you know, 80 drones, 5 gas, max economy. It's basically what that is, right? So hopefully that makes, makes sense. Uh, obviously, we still go double Evo Chamber in this matchup, unlike ZVP before. Uh, you got the explanation on ZVP and how... Single Evo upgrades don't really help you versus Archons, Colossus, and Storm. But of course, against Marines, Marauders, those upgrades are always going to be helpful, which is why we want to play double Evo. Once Terran starts setting up his Siege, it's usually the perfect time to send half the army across the map. Yeah, absolutely. And the thing is, even if you are across the map with that army, you shouldn't send it in unless they're distracted elsewhere. If they're just chilling at home, you don't really want to keep backstabbing. But remember the angle, guys. If they're pushing this right side, I always want to attack from the left. And in general, you guys know I always seek out the natural expand. Because if you can get on top of their rally and split some units into the third and the natural, it's like they have to bring their whole army back or they're screwed. So those backstabs are very difficult to deal with. And uh, it really causes a lot of problems for the Terran. These notes are great and all, but nothing beats just learning as you play. I've learned no matter how much content I watch and absorb, you have to actually play a lot to get reps. 100% freak show. Yeah. A lot of people um, get really weird with like, oh, I'm just going to like watch things and that's how I'll learn. Anyone who's learned anything, like you can't just watch a guitar, a bunch of guitar videos and be like, I know how to play guitar now. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> wouldn't it be amazing if we could just do the, you know, is it's like just plug into the plug a chord into our head and be like, I was I was literally like I know kung fu. Um, yeah, it's it's not it's not like that. <laughs> what if the opponent keeps some of their army to defend run bys? Um, then their push sucks, right? Their push is way weaker. They can't use the select all army key. And I mean, there's always some units at home, but how many is it? Well, what if it's one tank? Oh, one tank shuts down everything, pig. I'm like, well, what if you just come in with like this many units? One tank isn't going to stop that. You blow up the wall, get on the tank, and then you're in. But what if they have a tank and, and, and 20 marines? Okay, well, you can commit to 60 zerglings and 30 banelings. You'll, you'll fuck it up still. Well, what if their whole army's sitting there? Cool, like you have the whole map to yourself. 
you know, that's fine. You can spread creep and, and get further ahead. You know? You're like, but well, well, what if, what if, okay, what if they are attacking you, but then there's, you know, half of their army is here. And I'm like, cool. I mean, you don't have to backstab. Like, you could just grab the backstab and be like, oh, that's a lot of stuff. Bring it in behind and sandwich their army. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's always one of those things where people are like, well, you know, like, what if this? And it's like, it's Starcraft's a flexible game. You're going to come into unlimited situations. But in general, just think about it in terms of move and counter move. If you just fucking sit in your corner with your dick in your hand, your opponent can do anything they want. He can drop your whole base, your main, with half his army. You're like, oh, God. And then when you run back, he runs in and kills two bases on the right side of the map. And you're like, oh, God. On the other hand, if half of his army is sitting there, he's got two tanks and three bunkers defending his three base, and he's paranoid as shit because you've backstabbed him a few times, you don't need your backstabs to keep running in, right? It's a strategy game. You don't want to keep doing the same thing over and over again, right? Unless it's like the, the Dark Ages and your opponents don't know how to read and write, in which case you can keep using the same strategy over and over again. The Mongols love that shit. They're like, oh, we're afraid, we're running away. They're like, haha, chase these pussy horse archers. Oh, they surrounded us and fucked us up. Damn. If only we knew how to read and write and share the fact that they've done this 4,000 times already. We might be able to counter it, but, you know. Luckily, luckily the thing is, yeah. So, in a StarCraft game, um, it's important to have backup options. Think about the other steps. So, if your opponent's really heavily committed to defense... Um, maybe you're maybe you got ultras or broodlords, right? Um, maybe you bring that army back and you just shut down any push they have on the map, right? So that's the great thing is is using mobility doesn't have to be like these guys just run in and kill everything. It can be, oh, I'm forcing you to leave a lot more defense at home. Now your attack has lost a lot of its sting because you're worried about that. I have more creep spread, I have more map control, my economy is bigger, my upgrades are better because I'm less distracted. And you can't secure a fourth base. When they move out to take a fourth, you blow it up. You run in, blow it up, run away. And they're like, oh, and then they finally move their whole army over and they've got this beautiful spread and they're like, you can't take my fourth out. And then half your army runs in and blows up their third. And they're like, yeah. And you know, and you're so far ahead at this point, you're on five bases and 80 drones and they can't get a fourth base up and you just roll through them, right? Oh, right, all right, all right, guys. We've got our first ZVZ. This is going to be good because we are no longer building a safety spine crawler. We're only doing that reactively. Also, uh, we are no longer committing to a two-base roach push. We're doing the same opening, but it's a fake. We're going to be going into muters behind it. Uh, there is an advanced swap as well, where if our spy gets spotted, uh, we can potentially just not build muters and just go mass roach anyway. But the idea is we're going to try and surprise them. So we're going to show roaches, move out to take a third, make it look like we're probably hiding a big roach attack, and then, hey, we've got muters out. Force a big anti-air response, and of course, behind that, Send this drone down to the natural here, at just before 200 minerals, guys. Man, am I putting my overlord late every game? What's going on? I, I feel like <laughs> I feel like those drones are popping out a little late. Anyways, it's all good. Hatchery goes down. So that's 16 hatchery, guys. Remember, no drone scout, same as all the other matchups. And uh, this guy can go across as well. So we've got this guy's going to go in there and out there. That overlord can go to the other side. Um, we obviously want the 18 gas 17 pool. So did build those drones slightly late. Actually, do we need a gas is the question. The answer should be no, right? So the pool could have been down a few seconds earlier. Oh, well, it is what it is. All right, we're just going to make sure these drones kind of stack up on these patches, guys, uh, because otherwise they're going to bounce around. So you want these guys to stack up on the, um, the further away mineral patches. Now, I have a feeling my lair is going to be too late for this build to be like top tier. And I think as a result, I'm probably going to need to be taking a gas about 19 supply and, uh, and, and do that. But we're going to try this without the 19 gas first, just so it's like exactly the same basically as the previous uh, iteration of the build order. And then we'll kind of go from there. Um, Natural's already almost finished, guys. So let's start transferring these drones that are tripled up on the mineral patches down to the natural. And there we go, that one as well. All right, pool is a few seconds late, as I said. And we're just going to build two lings, go for a little scouty scout with that. And it looks like one more drone is over there. All right, cool. So remember, uh, I believe it was at three minutes, uh, 36 supplies when we went for the two gases. Now, I think we maybe we'll just speed that number up slightly to like 32 supplies, something like that. Because obviously we don't want it to be, be too delayed. That's, that's like, if that's such a big concern, which it definitely is, I think that'll be the way to do it. 32 supply. So we can just kind of go, okay, double gas, 32 supply, about 235. I think that's not bad. 
Um, we want to build a third queen straight away, so we're going to go inject, inject. And uh, we are building a third queen in the main. That's all right, I think. Oh, okay, we're going to build these over pull these overlords back. Send my lings around. My opponent is Masters 1, by the way, for those who don't know. Oh, I forgot to build my overlord, guys. That's kind of rough. So we're going to build a few uh, extractors there. <laughs> just just to, to get the double Evo Roachhorn still. All right. All right, this is very nasty. Uh, now, obviously, we want to cancel those. We don't need those gases just yet. That was just to squeeze a few more drones out. Probably wasn't necessary to do the extractor trick, but forgetting that overlord was huge. First time doing the build, so of course it's going to be a little sloppy, but that was still a little worse than I wanted it to be. The lair is meant to start at 100 gas, so that is a little late as well. And now we want to go four gases. That's also a, obviously a change. Going mute is that. It's kind of obvious, so I didn't write it in the build, but realizing now I should, so please let me know, guys. We're going to start plus one range there, and you can actually see the Evo chamber wobbling. So high level players will always check for that, and, um, and that's something we should definitely, uh, you know, be... Uh, Checking out. All right, we're gonna start building roaches here. Notice we've already got plus one, guys. I'm gonna try to spread that creep out as well. I think we've got enough guys to uh, saturate the base on the way. Maybe one more. Uh, waiting for these overlords to pop, guys. There we go. So we're gonna build these five roaches now. Obviously, we need to start the spire immediately in the back of the base, as soon as this lair's done. There we go. Start it. And send a drone out. Okay. So he sees all these roaches coming out now. And we're going to leave that queen in the wall, I guess. And I definitely need to be a little bit more wary of this area around my base in terms of like, hey, if a uh, scout comes in, we're going to need to be ready, right? So we're putting lots of overlords and a few more roaches, guys. But because the spy is almost halfway done, we need to build nothing but overlords and save money for now, okay? Now, I haven't really scouted what he's up to. We really should be doing that. So let's try to make an overseer. We'll send that guy through his base. And remember, we want to build eight muters. And then we actually are letting these upgrades finish, even though they're kind of fake because we're not planning to commit to it. They're actually, uh, ooh, go, go, go. Oh, he's going to commit. He sees it. All right, guys. So this is where we can do the advanced mind game and just build roaches instead of muters. Okay. So he sees the spire. We let it finish. And that seems kind of bad for me. But because he's now going to have to respond with spores and whatnot. That should be fine. We're going to build one Mutalisk. It's going to start hitting Overlords. And then we're going to just do a giant plus one Roach Speed attack, okay? Because I got a lot of gas, we'll put these guys there. Oh, that Overseer does get die. And... Alright, he's still building roaches, which is not good for me, guys, but that's it. We're going to go for it anyway. We're just going to run in and see if we can win this game. We're not going to go for the third base. Uh, we're just going to go forwards the natural. I said I wouldn't use this, probably, this advanced switch up where I'd just go muters anyway. And I think I will next time. I just wanted to try this one out in our first game with it, where it's like, hey, you saw I'm going muters. Guess what? Because you've just built all these spores and queens, you really can't defend. Good, good queen pool. I just realized my opponent's name is Tom Jones, by the way. Wouldn't it be funny if this was Kobe? Guy that used to always play the Pussycat song on my stream. Got song request removed. And here we go. We can try to micro. I guess I'm doing some pretty advanced micro with my roaches, but I'm not really doing anything else, so... I don't know. Up to you guys if you think that's a bit too high for uh, for Master's level. 
But yeah, this is I've died to this mind game myself. Um, the whole like, hey, I've got a spy. Uh, haha, just kidding. Uh, and that's why I, I'm doing it here. Let's get plus two attack, plus one armor, and we can join the third. We can also transfer half that mineral line from the main to the third. He's actually defending like a beast, but I don't think it matters too much because let's try and yeah, we should have stayed here and just focused the Roach Warren down. Anytime he comes out like that, notice I move out, move in, and I'm like, oh cool, you're exposing a few roaches, so some of his roaches are stuck. But notice I A move, and then whenever he pulls back, we hit the Roach Horn, which forces him to come out, right? It's the, the threat of what will happen otherwise. Inject, inject, inject. You can see I missed a ton of injects here. But Roaches aren't the most lava intensive, so it works out okay. And um, the whole thing you're trying to get there is if they... like Notice I had a really good ring of vision. We're really thinking about what information we're hiding, what we're trying to deny. But I didn't see the Overseer morphing. So... He actually kind of was a little lucky there that that was in that gap in the vision. If that was just barely in vision, I would have seen the Overseer morphing and I already would have had my Queens ready on the edge and we would have denied the scouting. And then we would have followed through the normal way. Eight Mutalisks, drone the third base, take a fifth gas, make plus two range straight away, and then just do Muta Harass, clean up the Overlords on the map, force a lot of Spore Crawlers, Queens, and then just do a big plus two range Roach all in. And that's the way to do it. <laughs> Where was the third Overlord in the center of the map? That was the Overlord that forgotten to get built. That, that forgot to get built for a long time. Um, third Overlord is actually meant to sit outside the base. It's the fourth Overlord that goes to the middle of the map. It's first Overlord, two, two of them sit outside the base. Third one there, fourth one goes to the middle. But yeah, we completely forgot that Overlord and then we were kind of panicking a little bit. So I think we just clicked it just around the base. But uh, yeah, denying that information is absolutely crucial, guys. If you don't, you can do this mind game though. So let's think about how did this work out? Well... He's gone and built two more queens and one, two, three spore crawlers in response to me going for the spire. Now, he's actually played pretty darn safe in that regard, that he's also gone back to roach production. He's going for plus two. I mean, he had a great economy as well. I dare say too great. Okay, I dare say, guys, he would have 100% died if we just committed to the roach attack initially. Because he didn't really see what we were doing, right? Like, this could have just been a two-base roach push. He has no idea. So his his build... I was like, how is he on 64 drones? So he played very, very greedy. Because he went link speed and baneling nest, which didn't serve a function. Because, of course, we were doing the, the two-base build, guys. And he fully droned his third base. So hats off to him for a great saturating of the minerals before taking the gases. But if we were doing the previous build from the previous leagues, this would be a free win even on this big map. However, who's going to do a straight roach push? Just a two base roach push on altitude. Seems like not a good strategy. And that gives you credence for two reasons. Number one, Tom Jones maybe is just gambling and saying, you're not going to do that. That's dumb on this map. That's not good. Therefore, I can exclude it and gamble and you're not doing it. The other thing is, even if you do that, I'm in a pretty good position to defend it because of the long rush distance. Now, obviously, he has a very big lack of vision. He doesn't have an overlord outside my base. He can't see the push path, which is a huge mistake for him. He's playing very blind. So he's missing a fundamental there. And uh, and he's droning all the way to 66 drones, overlord speed. Like this is crazy greed from him. So that actually could have meant, meant if he was just a little bit better on his roach production after this, maybe he could have defended. You can see I'm down 20 workers, but... Uh, also, once he saw it was Spire, he should have been pulling these Overlords back a little bit quicker. You can kind of get them back once the Mutas come, but you'll lose a few of them, right? Because Mutas are so much faster. Now, did he build any more drones? He built one more, plus two. He's also building more Queens right now. Um, and he's got a little bit of Lava available. But you can see I've just got way more Roaches than him. I'm not wasting money on plus two, because we know we're going to fight before then. And uh, it's not unusual to just lose to anyone. Yes, Twitch chat. Well played. Well played, Mr. Mings. Uh, no, Tom Jones had some epic greed and probably would have been way ahead if I was playing a bit more uh, contained. But with how late my third was to fully drone his third and take six gases, that's a, that's a bit of an issue. That's a bit of an issue. Um... What would be a safe lead for my opponent? This is always tricky because when you're playing against muters, you want to be greedy and build drones. The funny thing is when he saw the Spire, he already was maxed out on drones. His greed knew no bounds. 
<laughs> a lot of people a lot of people out there being mega greedy in CVZ these days. Um if I did just go eight muters, I would have been way behind in that game because he was greedy. But hey, if your opponent gambles on some greed, happens to do really well against what you're doing, sometimes you just lose the, the poker game. And that's what would have happened if I stuck to just going the eight muters even after being scouted. But uh, we were a little unlucky to not see the Overseer earlier. Otherwise, we would have denied the Scout on the Spire to begin with and been more confident committing to that. All right, guys, we're up against Wanky, a 4,600 Terran, who apparently uh, recently was in a uh, Is It Imbro or Do I Suck episode not too long ago. So that's kind of funny. All right, so let's make sure we build this Overlord. We're holding down the Overlord key. And the first Overlord, guys, is going to go right across that map. See what's up. Pull on back for the Scouty Scout. We've got camera location on the natural, camera location on the third, camera location on the fourth, and our fifth base up front. A lot, of, a lot of Zergs prefer to take the front base earlier. I kind of like this uh, expand off to the side in general, but we'll see how we go. Uh, Okie doke. So, yeah, we've got to send these drones down earlier. Um, I guess you can't send one of those drones to take it. I don't know why I thought you could, guys. I was like, you need to just rally that egg down, but it'll always get there a little bit late, so... Who knows? Maybe I'm just misremembering how to play StarCraft, or maybe the expansions are a little bit further away than they used to be. Maybe the old, like, Cyber Forest map pool is what I'm thinking of. Uh, okay, guys, so we're going to be going Rally that one to, ga to, to there, and then we want to go Gas Pool. This is, of course, Zerg vs. Terran. So remember, what are the big changes? No Drone Scout, which gives us more minerals. We're, we're essentially playing pro play at this point, right? Like, these are much more like pro build orders that I'm doing in every, every single game, right? Um, for those watching live, please help the noobs in chat, by the way. If you guys can, like, link them up timestamp parts of videos or like episode one and that sort of stuff because that that'd be great really appreciate it gang and uh that is an issue i had three workers on one patch so i just fixed that there but yeah this is much closer to pro builds so those who watch a lot of pro play you're gonna recognize like hey this is what you do in your ladder games big this is this is kind of what you're pulling out on the ladder a lot more now it's still a little bit different we're still sticking to things like the mass hatchery you know mass slings and stuff but there are a few little changes here and there that do make differences. Now, we're building another Overlord, putting that down to watch the Reaper path. And interestingly, that is very interesting, guys. That's a 2 Rex Reaper opening. Wow, okay. Build two Queens, build four Lings. Um, I think we still want to take this third base. So let's just send the drone there to make sure that doesn't get stuck. And we want to pull off gas still. I'm going to build up to eight Zerglings. I haven't played against this um, much recently at all. So, I think eight Zerglings and then keep droning is the way to do it, okay, guys? And we're going to try to move past the Reaper so that he can't just move and shoot as much without getting punished. We're going to send the healthy Zerglings to go after him while the weak Zerglings pull back. And the Queen's almost out, so we can just hide these Zerglings in the back. Or we can go cover the ledge, potentially. Uh, but it looks like he's just hanging here for now. Okay, inject, inject. Do we want to do an inject there? Yes, we do. And we're going to build two more queens as well. Make Let's make this easy, guys. Let's let's go for four queens, because we don't know if he's going to keep committing or not. Build more overlord. Build more overlord. Now, I'd like to take that third base. Let's try and mine those minerals out if we can. He's still building reapers, so good thing we decided to go for uh, extra queens. Now, notice we're trying to just scare him back a little bit. Oh, pull back. Pull back, pull back, pull back, guys. We can't be losing these queens, okay? Let's build the third base. Hold down that drone key. Oh, he's going hard. Okay. Alright. And I'm gonna just keep building queens. He's still rallying reapers, guys. We're gonna keep building queens. And try to pull the front, the, the tough ones to the front, yeah? Now, notice we've got ling speed now. So we can swap into mass zergling, but otherwise I've just been droning and building queens. Droning, building queens. Okay. So notice we're gonna try and spread these queens out so they're in more of a concave. Transfuse the weak ones. And, oh, pull back the weak ones! Alright, guys, we're going to try and surround the rally a little bit, but I don't know if we're able to. So, oh my god. Really good micro by him. And let's just, basically, guys, we're going to grab these guys and send those across to intercept the rally. And the rest of our lings are going to look for the surround. So we're building overlords, rallying here, inject, inject. We've already killed one reaper, guys. We're going to try to kill another if we can. Oh my god, we can't lose that. We can't lose that. I, I thought we'd have more time. Oh, I have to cancel it! Alright, let's try and surround him so he can't escape, guys. Oh, 
Oh, he's going to fight me. Inject, inject. I don't know what these guys are doing, guys. Apparently, they're killing a barracks. It's probably a good idea to have pulled those back earlier. Like I said, I haven't played against this in a long time. So, this is not so much extract uh, instructional. This is just me being like, ah, bleh, survive. We're going to build two macro hatcheries as well as that third base. Now, why two macro hatcheries? I was floating money. This is not a you do this in this situation. Uh, you know, against Reapers, you need to do the thing. No, just, uh, just a good idea to when you're floating a lot of money and the game's chaotic, you build those macro hatcheries. That's like kind of a tenant of this entire bronze to GM, right? <laughs> All right, we've got those bases saturating with a few extra drones. He comes in, he'll get surrounded, man. All right, we've got some more lings out. I think we just go around. He's being way too greedy. We're going to keep building lings because if we can just surround these guys, then it's all worth it, guys. <clears throat> so notice we're trying to get a wrap around. We don't want to go too far past to the point where he can change directions and get us. And it looks like, especially with the new guys popping out, that should be enough. And he's got a third command center finish, and he's going bio. Okay, good to know. Let's fix our shit. Inject, inject, use our creep queens, split her off. Inject, hold down the drone key. All right, spread a bit of creep. And now what do we need, guys? We need a lair, we need gases, we need to hotkey our macro hatcheries, which apparently didn't go down. Put our fourth base out there. And I would say our economy sucks, but hopefully we have a few minutes to recover. So we're putting Ling Scouts out on the map, Ling's on the watchtowers, bring the rest home, and just keep injecting. Just keep injecting, keep injecting. Shift one, send to the camera location. Let's take that fourth gas, set that rally point. Put guys on gas here. Can't really make those upgrades yet. That's okay, guys. We're just droning, droning, droning. Spread the creep. So... Whenever you take damage after these, your opponent has basically thrown some big haymakers. You're bruised, you're staggering, but your opponent's gassed out, okay? So his next attack is quite delayed. Unfortunately, I say that, it's already coming. GG. Um, maybe, maybe not, we'll see. 1-1 one, one upgrades are on the way now. <laughs> We've got a few idle drones there. Obviously, because I see an attack coming, I need to mace mass units. Um... And it looks like he's going to commit in pretty hard. So I'm massing Zerglings reactively. It's not that many units, though, is it? No, I think we're okay. He stimmed pretty early, guys. If he kills a few overlords, he kills a few overlords. That's totally fine. I, I don't mind that at all. All right. Yeah, I think we're fine. Let's take a fifth base now. He's going home. We can see the big red dot on the minimap. So I think we're okay. Um, we're going to try and do a backstab with those lings just to try to force him home, okay? And I'm going to build some drones for this base up here. Uh, why? Just because I'm like, ah, I need more economy. That's going to take me to 71 drones. My main's already like half mined out. But uh, I think it's <clears throat> probably a good idea. All right, he's there. He's stimmed. That's fine. Wanky's, wanky's looking good. We're going to pull back. We're going to pull back. Spread creep, spread creep, spread creep. First thing probably should have been macro cycle. Oh, okay. He's dropping. Very good. Okay, so this player has what we call a uh, boner, guys. Let's take that fifth gas. Build three drones for it. All right. These guys can go back on gas and rebuild the spawning pool, guys. All right. We're going to make Baneling soon. We're not there yet. Um, unfortunately for me, guys, I actually can't make Lings right now. So we're going to make a round of drones for that base, which is, of course, highly dangerous. Uh, we're going to make a lot of Banelings as well. And we're going to basically build new queens, because we don't actually have any injecting queens. They're all on defense duty. So we just went around and built those, those new queens. Okay, let's try to A-move this. All right, gonna build a few infestors, guys. Send some lings over there to deal with those scouting zerglings. Making more zerglings, making more zerglings. Apparently that queen never built, that's okay. That queen never built as well? Oh, okay, I don't know what's going on then. I guess maybe I was supply blocked or something like that. Let's make two, two. All right, we're gonna split some lings off, guys. Uh, over here for a backstab, okay. Those guys over there. And we're just going to make tons of banes because we can already see this game being 
Oh, there we go. Yeah, there's the parade. I was like, there's got to be a big push coming soon. This this player is super horny, has been like unable to keep it in their pants all game long. Now notice I, I, I've i drawn up a lot more on minerals than normal, and I'm not really sure why. There's something kind of instinctual there that I'm going to have to break down in the post game. Um, I'm not going to like fight my instincts too hard. All right, let's clean those guys up. Lots more Banes in the run by. Uh, we're going to try to see what his army looks like. Because I still don't know if it's really like Widow Mines or not. We'll make an Overseer just in case. Transfer these guys. What is this? It's Marine Tank. But there's not many tanks. Okay, that's that's really good for me. Alright, we're going to make a few more Banes. And, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of backstabs, guys. But that feels like one big bundle of units, doesn't it? So I kind of feel like we can kind of set up what we call the Omega Surround, okay? Because he's, he's really, like, showing what he's doing ahead of time. He's trying to bait me into him, right? And I could backstab, but we're actually just going to bring these guys in from behind. And notice I've, I've set units up on every side. If your opponent really is slow to push, he started breaking those rocks two minutes ago, you can do this. F2, A move, okay? We're building more lings behind it. Uh, I don't really think there's any micro I should do here, guys. Yeah, that's, that's all. That should be fine. Hive, inject, inject, inject. Uh, build more lings. Build spores on these bases, I guess, just in case. Uh, build some spores on the edge. Accidental Overseer, why not? Now, I don't know if he has a fourth base or not, guys. We're going to add our backstab key back into our main army. Oh. Is there an arm? Oh, there's nothing there. Okay. Does he have... Let's select a Zergling. Alt-0, send it over to that right side. If he doesn't have a base, there's no need for us to attack. Because I'm max... Uh, I think we can. I think because he was so aggressive and then that army, it feels like even though he had a third base, I don't think he ever really had the work account of the upgrades. I think this was like, I'm going to kill you with momentum. Oh, there we go. Okay. There, there is one. Never mind. So we'll split some Banelings and Lings to attack the left side. They're going to attack the production over there after we blow up this planetary and then distract him on this side. And if we can bait him into some fungals, that would be absolutely fantastic. Okay. Let's keep taking hatcheries just because it's a good idea. You always got to have places to transfer to. Let's bring the infestors forward here. And we can just kind of chain fungal those uh, those medevacs. I know it doesn't seem like the normal thing to do because he was free split. I figure that's probably the best thing I can pull off here. One more. That's a lot of medevac kills. Now, we select number seven. We tab tab. We morph Banelings. That's this army on the left side, guys. But we're doing that off the minimap. We don't need to look at it, you know? Inject, 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 inject. We used shift that time to do that nice and quickly. Shift one, shift one. Creep spread. Remember, when you're ahead, there's no need to force the issue. You get further ahead by spreading creep. And the wind condition people never talk about in Zerg vs. Terran is if you get creep to their natural, their brain will break. Oh, he's also opened up a back door. This, which means this backstab's going to be even better, guys. So we're just going to run in here now. And then these guys over on this side will blow up this base on the right once he's distracted. So we're going to try to get in there, get some Banes in. Alright, try to get him up. Pretty good reaction by him, i got to say. Pretty good. Try to get the Banes in the SCVs if you can. But you can't defend both sides at once, guys. Mass Zergling on the way. And that there will be a dead planetary as well. And that's going to be the end of his economy. Because we just killed a fifth base attempt to get started. And the fourth base. He's back on three. We're on like seven. What would we do behind that? Well, you could go three, three. You can go adrenal glands. But it's not all that important. Just keep making Ling Bane, injecting. And keep your drone count up. Check your drone count. Oh, I built a bunch of spores. My worker count's lower. Build some workers to finish off that saturation. This base is a bit oversaturated. Grab four or five workers. Send them over here. And you guys know I like to move my fifth camera location to my newest unsaturated base. So we can be like, oh, okay, I want to go to 90 drones or whatever. We can do that. But let's go back in this game and let's take a look at what happened and how I did try to keep things simple for myself. Most pros would try to squeeze the third in earlier. but I And I was going to do it, but then I was like, you know, that requires a bit more advanced queen micro and stuff. It's not safe. Um, you know, if they are going three racks reaper, you can actually die if you're too focused on the, on the third. I didn't know he was going three racks reaper. But uh, it definitely felt like it with how many Reapers he rallied across. Let's check. Yeah. So that was 3Rex Reaper. Very well played here um, in terms of just non-stop aggression. Were my instincts right, though? That when I surrounded that big push, he was like actually just way behind on numbers. Let's check, guys. So he moves out here. Yeah, he's down about 20 supply. Uh, our upgrades are actually... I'm only 10 seconds out on the upgrades. And he has a fourth base landed. So, you know, not, not too far behind by any means, but he doesn't have any Widow Mines against a Massling Bane style. 
which is always problematic. And with only one factory, he's got a second one building a tech lab, but only two siege tanks. He's going to need like a really beautiful pre-spread and to not get fully surrounded. But by moving on creep like he did, uh, this push, it, it felt like, I understand he wants to like slow down my creep and slow me down, but he didn't really have a kill timing necessarily here. I think he probably would have been better off sieging the tank, tank there, tank there. Really always put him in these corners. Don't really move them from there. You can start to clear creep with a drop or two and then just send like a double drop down the right. And then as he's getting maxed and getting more tanks or widow mines or hellbats mixed in, he can probably deal with the Massling Bane a little bit better. But let's be real, if you're up in supply like this, up 15 workers and uh, up 10 army supply, it's a pretty big advantage. So I think we're in a pretty good position off that opening. Okay, guys, so let's, let's, let's actually analyze this. Okay, so I see what's going on. We're doing a very standard thing, just pulling off gas, making link speed. I have a drone going to the third. But then I'm like, oh, okay, you're going two racks reaper. So I decide to build eight Zerglings here two queens and this is where a lot of pro gamers only build one extra queen and they're just like yeah that's yeah drone up drone up a little bit take a third base and then add more zerglings closer to link speed finishing but you can get in trouble a little bit so i think this is a safer response that we're going to write out here and uh you guys can fiddle with it like i said i haven't played against this too much but i think this is a pretty great way of doing it how to play the slow ground two racks reaper wall off and it could easily be three racks right so what do we do guys delay third hatchery starting D the drone can still wait there though go straight for overlord and four queens uh, i guess even before that we want to go straight to eight zerglings uh get to eight lings group your queens all on your defense key bring to the front Try to intercept Reapers uh, on the ledge jump if they rotate towards main. So if your Lings are like waiting on the ledge, you can get a lot of damage on those Reapers and force them back down. That can be great. Connect bases with Creep as well. I guess this is kind of micro stuff. This is the micro responses, yeah. Go straight for Overlord and four queens. Uh, keep droning to two base saturated. And you could even put back on gas. Two base saturated. Try to squeeze third hatchery in when you can. And then make an offlings to surround reapers if they are in your face. Now, obviously... Uh, Obviously, if it's 3 racks Reaper, so uh, 3 racks Reaper is a bit harder, um, but it's way worse follow-up for the Terran, right? So what do you want to do, guys? Fourth Reaper arriving usually announces that it's 3 racks Reaper rather than just 2 racks. 2 racks normally stops. Uh, another way, if we want to be highly specific on that, let, let's talk about an exact tell. So the interesting thing here is, uh, when does that third barracks' Reaper arrive, guys? Right. Reaper, Reaper, Reaper. Yeah, this is the last Reaper to start. So this Reaper arrives at a little bit earlier than normal. Ah, okay. Where were we? But that's a fourth Re Reaper, what? Am I dumb? So it, yeah, it is the fourth Reaper that arrives. Yeah, because that's already one, two, three. Then number four comes out. Okay. If a fourth Reaper arrives at three minutes. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Uh, arrives at four minutes. Wait, did I say four minutes? Three minutes. Jesus. I'm like, four minutes is way too late. What are you talking about, pig? There's no way. <laughs> okay so uh you could just go in with your overlord actually right if you just go in further with your overlord you can usually confirm three racks reaper by checking ramp and then up into the main 
Keep in mind that if you're going to rely on that, most players won't build it at the ramp, I would imagine. I don't know for sure. But I know Beyond would always try to hide this barracks up like over here. So, yeah. Um, technically, though, if the command center is not down at about 220, then you kind of know 220, 230 that they are, they are committing to the third barracks. So he went really deep. Clicking individual queens that he's shooting and pulling them back is big. Um, and also not injecting too hard is pretty big. Like, you can drop your first inject still. But there's an argument that you can just save that energy for transfuse. Uh, I think you always want one inject. And you still need to get a creep tumor at some point as well. But you can see that as these queens get weak, you want to kind of pull them to the back and wait for them to get transfused. Don't just run forward. Because they're so much more valuable five seconds from now. So I almost screwed up on that and lost these. Luckily, he didn't punish me till now, and these transfusers just barely get down in time and keep me alive. And then we pull back those weak ones as well. And we do manage to kill a Reaper there also. So usually, you can, if you're seeing 3 Rex Reaper, you can get lower on drones than them, and it's totally fine. Because the earlier you go and just do a big Lynx around, the better. So I think that's something we should also rely on as well, or we should write down. Once Ling Speed is close, mass Lings and go for the surround. You can macro once it's shut down. Yeah, but I think I think going four queens is generally going to make you super safe. If you're always playing against someone who does it like Beyond and they just build three Reapers, you can be quite greedy. If it's just three Reapers, you can get away with quite a lot. But uh, it really depends what you guys are running into. If you wanted your default to be a bit safer or a bit greedier. 8 out of 10 times, they're only committing to 3 Reapers and then just building add-ons. You can be quite greedy and just start the third base off 3 Queens, a couple Zerglings, probably fine. But if they're always going 3 Rex Reaper into like 10, 12 Reapers, that's where things are going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit different. When you thought you produced Queens, your spawning pool was rebuilding. Oh, thank you, Messmakers. So very good point there. And to be fair, it was pretty lazy of me to be that far out of position and uh, when I lost my spawning pool. See, I was like, oh, he'll have to F2 home the moment he sees these lings. But notice he didn't. He actually manually grabbed those and didn't turn his medevacs around, which is really well done by him. So it was a bit of a high-risk move for me where I was assuming he would bring everything home and I would just kind of pull his focus to his side of the map. And I actually got punished very hard for that. Is that a bad move? No, it's not a bad move. If that works most of the time, it's a good move. In this case, it didn't work out. And... The higher level your opponent, the less it's probably going to work. So that might be an amazing move First, most players. Didn't work here versus Wanky, who is, by the way, another Masters 1 player. So we're getting a lot of stiff opposition here in the Masters 3 show, just because we're grabbing people from all Masters and even high diamond range, just to kind of get that, that mix up. Now, it obviously kind of hurts. I should have rebuilt the spawning pool even before it died, the moment I saw he was targeting it, because I'm kind of playing a little bit slower than I normally do, trying to explain things as I go, and just take my time a little bit to not just blitz through mechanically. Uh, we did take a few extra seconds, and because of that, I was like, I guess I'm droning up, right? Before that, I did drone the fourth base, though, a bit. Why did I drone that fourth? Oh, by the way, you guys might get confused by this number. That's just the gold minerals bugging it out. So don't worry about that number. It's still 15 out of 16. Still the same number of mineral patches as always, guys. Think about it in front of it. It's just it's, it's counting some of these mineral patches. These two, I think, are close enough to for it to think those are part of the minerals on that base. Yeah. Did he lose the drop once he killed the pool? Why didn't he attack while the, while the pool was down? No, he did. Right after he came in with the drop. But he didn't really have a big army to push with. Uh, he'd been ignoring his macro a little bit with all of his aggression and stuff. He had to catch up. Barracks, armory, factory, SCVs. Terran takes a ton of APM to get all the macro up. And if you don't have all your add-ons ready yet, you're kind of behind from where you want to be in the game. So he had to he had to spend a bit of focus on that and uh, and didn't actually have a push timing lined up. So you can kill a spawning pool and be like, oh, he can't build fighting units. But your opponent's already got a standing army. If your army isn't excellent, you can't really take that much advantage of it. Yeah. All right, going into another Zerg versus Zerg. Now, I think... Um, what we did in the previous Zerg vs. Zerg is really good. So I'm going to try that again with 32 supply, double gas in the main. It's just, it's just slightly sped up. Just, you know, 15 seconds or so. Maybe slightly faster, 15, 20 seconds. But <clears throat> I think that allows us to get the Spire up pretty quickly. And that should be pretty effective. So we're just setting up those camera locations as per usual. And of course, we'll send a drone down. Hello? Ooh, starting those drones are... 
a tiny bit late there. Send this guy down there. Get this guy doubled up. So doubled up, doubled up, doubled up, doubled up. You can see. And uh, ZVZ. So we're going to once again be trying to go Mutalisks. And you know what, guys? Even if the Spy is scouted this time, I will commit to the Muters. Uh, we showed you guys the fancy swap partially because I wanted to try it, see how it feels. Partially because we were playing a Masters 1 player. This is actually a Masters 3 player, uh, 11 from Clan Ashes, who is no doubt a good player, but a uh, big difference between Masters 3 and Masters 1, of course. As you would expect, one of them is closer to Diamond, one of those is closer to Grandmaster. And uh, that, of course, does make quite the difference, doesn't it? Oi, oi, oi. Mine there. All right, so mine. Just making sure these guys actually get a few trips off. Otherwise, they just don't spend the time bouncing around. Build another Overlord. And remember, we're going to build that 28 Overlord ahead of time as well. That really hurt our build last time, which accentuated uh, just how far behind we were. Uh, I still might change this build order to just drop the gas on like 18 or 19 here and just, you know, start mining gas. But for the most part, we do want to kind of move down here to this base. See what we can do. All right, build one pair of Zerglings. You guys know we like to scout with that. Try to get it in. We'll try to do some active micro with it if we can. This Overlord should have already been across the map. That guy can sit out front. Build another Overlord for the middle of the map. Something Bullia was good enough to point out we did not do last time. And uh, yeah, we'll see what's up. So what are you really looking for here, guys? Uh, nothing in particular. Just, oh yeah, there's drones mining. Two links coming up. Looks pretty standard. If there's no drones there, it's a little bit sus. That's the, the main thing. All right, guys. Uh, we built that extra overlord. I guess we built two. Oops. Anyway, double gas down here at 235. Build a third queen straight away. And it looks like those lings are coming in. So we're going to move this queen over to the ramp. Try and intercept them. Try and get as much damage on these guys as we can on the way in, okay? Don't need to do any other micro. We see a baneling nest. This looks all standard, guys. We'll hide those in the corner of the base, okay? All right, guys on gas, guys on gas. Extra overlord down the bottom. So we see some lings. Let's just try and check the drone saturation on the natural. That'll tell us everything we need to know, guys. So how many drones are... Oh, okay, I was about to say, that's piss all drones. Oh god, this guy's all linning me. But then I saw a lot of drones pop out, so we're okay. <laughs> Sorry. Lair on 100 gas. We're still going the double Evo and the Roach Horn, guys. Oh my god, sorry. Apologies. Oof. Alright, alright. Oh. Alright. <laughs> um, still going very mineral focused, of course. Uh, but we are going to take these gases on the natural. Uh, I guess it's a little bit later. I should write... Can you guys remind me? Write down the gas timing in the build, the 32, and the gases for the natural. So both gas timings. We start plus one range because we want him to see the wobbly boys. We don't know how good our opponent is at scouting, but we're going to assume he's actually paying attention to all the little specifics that he should be. Is he? Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. But we're going to assume our opponent's good at scouting. And oh, that's quite a few lings, guys. All right. Is this for real? I think we're going to wall off with an Evo. Try and get the queen on the inside just in case. All right, a few more drones there. Let's go for this Spire immediately, guys. Put that in the backside so we've got the most chances to deny any attempts on it. And we can make Roach Speed as well. We're meant to make Roach Speed even. All right, build a few more Overlords. We've got some Roaches coming out. And uh, we're going to build another drone. Send that to the Minerals. Remember, we shift-click that so that it Mineral Walks. All right, these guys are going to go over there, inject, inject. A few more roaches, and we can also build that third base. Build a few more overlords. When the spy is halfway done, we want to start saving money. So I guess we'll do that about now. We want to, quote unquote, hide some roaches behind the wall. Because, oh, we're, we're secretly massing them up, remember, guys? Just building lots of overlords and rallying to our third base. Pull that queen back. Now this, I think that might look a little sus just because those roaches were kind of late. Alright, I'm going to actually even fake move out here. We're going to A move to halfway across the map. And then A move back. 
And there we go. We've got muters on the way, guys. We've got eight of them building, or seven, which should be enough. These guys are going to go back, and we're droning that third. Okay. Inject, inject. This queen's going to move out there. And then these muters are hopefully going to surprise him. All right. Now we could go air weapons. No, 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 no. Remember, plus two range. Because all we're going to do is drone this third. And we can even uh, make sure we're quick to plug the gap. Oh, he's coming. He's coming. We see roaches, guys. All right, let's take the third on the other side. Because we're going to have to pull back here. Or can we defend this, maybe? I don't know. Maybe we can defend this, guys. Pull that queen into the corner. Oh, she got transfused off creep. Damn it. I mean, I got Roach Speed in plus one. I don't think he does. So this is actually a really good fight for me, right? And we can just pull back weak roaches, even. Now, I'm still droning behind this, but that's okay. Inject, inject. We can go. Got two third bases. That'll be the new third now. I might be able to kill him just because I think I have the units, guys. So we're going to click the spore crawler. Click the spore crawler. Maybe? Yeah, you can see that because he threw all those roaches away trying to kill me, the mutas can now just reign supreme, right? We're doing nothing but roaches behind it. And we can like hit that base, we can hit these overlords. I don't even need to commit right now. And I probably shouldn't because I'm missing a lot of macro. <laughs> All right, how many drones are we at guys? We should be at like 55. Yeah, we're a little bit higher than that even. Oh shit, those guys chased into a spore for I didn't realize he had a spore there. Okay, it is what it is. He's, he's coming out, though, which is way too aggressive. So notice we move, target fire. Move, target fire. If you just A move them, they're not going to be as effective. And you can just A move as well. It's not bad. Build a queen there. Inject, inject. And do we have plus two yet, guys? We should pretty soon. Oh, big supply block right now. That's okay. Plus two just kicked in. Let's get plus one armor. Build a macro hatch. So we over-focused on micro this game. But I think we have the numbers that it should be okay. So I don't really need to micro the roaches other than move them in. And just keep the muters alive, guys. We're just going to send those around to clean up any other exposed units on the map. We should be good. Make more roaches. Inject, inject, inject. And start transferring a few of these guys up there. Transfer to that base. And there we go. So the surprise mute is there. We did end up selling. I thought he might be a bit suspect not seeing that many roaches when those lings poke my natural wall. But no overseer scout that time. He didn't expect it at all. And you can see what our opponent did was actually really logical. Where he said, oh god, okay, I've got a third base advantage. I'm mining with seven workers versus a guy whose third is not. I need to mass roaches. But I think what I did here really sold the story. Because you've got to think about this from your opponent's point of view. He sees roaches coming out. He sees no third. He goes, oh, it is. It's exactly what players often do. It's that two base roach push we've been doing up to for here, guys, right? And then... <laughs> uh, basically, he's, he's kind of stuck. He's got roach speed. He's got plus one. But he has to stay on a pretty low work account, right? He's going to go up to, to 54 drones, make roaches, be ready for this roach attack. He's like, okay, okay, okay. Pull back, pull back, gather up, gather up, gather up. He's like, okay, we can't we can't go too high on drones. Rufus, he's really high on drones. He doesn't feel any pressure to attack us. Then he realizes, wait, is this a fake? What's going on here? And then, of course, the muters come out. And he's like, oh, shit. But he feels like he's already committed at this point. He's already gone across the map. He's realized, hey, if he doesn't attack me, I've got to maybe attack him. And I actually could have fought here. So this is interesting. My instinct was to run away because I actually have a lot more experience playing muters without a lot of roaches. But if you have roaches and roach upgrades, you can definitely fight here. I should have pulled back to here, but not as far as I did. I pulled too far back, right? And then I should have kept this hatchery alive. So I'm used to playing like a mass mutiling bane style where you just give up the hatchery, expand elsewhere, do backstabs. But when you've got roaches on the ground as well, I've got almost half as many roaches as he has here. We can we can fight those roaches with the muters overhead. We're going to win the fight, right? 
So that was definitely something that we, we could actually pay attention to. Yeah, just eight muters and stop. I only did enough gas for seven, so it was seven this game. Um, that's it. Is there a hotkey for inject? Says Jack lives here. I don't know what that means. Uh, you mean like the all, all abilities have hotkeys? Spawn lava, they all have hotkeys. For me, I, I use the core, so you can't really see it. It's the minus symbol, little hyphen, little hyphen symbol there. Use I use a weird hotkey setup. That's why you can't see that. All right, cool, cool, cool. Now, obviously, this was what we call an opportunistic counterattack, guys. Uh, basically. If you've got muters, he needs to build queens and spores, which is very expensive, but he's also just thrown his ground army away. So the whole idea of counterattacking after such a good fight is we lost four units, a hatchery and maybe a roach or drone or two, and he lost like, you know, a ton of roaches and lings. So by counterattacking, I'm like, hey, do you have enough anti yet? If not, the muters will kick your ass. Oh, you do have enough anti yet. That's okay. You don't have enough to deal with this. And it's not even that many roaches. It's like 10 roaches, three more coming in, 13 roaches. It's not a lot, but they end up doing game ending damage here. And that's the power of surprise mutalisks. So yeah, um, we had a pretty good ring of vision. Um, definitely be aware of the overlords near your base, uh, where they are and try to keep track of them. So you can be like, oh, he's morphing it overseer there. Deny those uh, scouts on the spire and you can see that the muta build is, is very effective there. Cool thing is you could still do the same, just straight up roach push from the previous, you know, leagues. And it looks the same to your opponent. So that's, that's the, whole, the whole point of this is similar opening bit of a divergence so we're gonna go 32 that's gonna be i'm gonna highlight that Woo, 32 guys so we've sped up the gas to 32 uh and then the other gases normally we go lair plus third gas but instead uh we're gonna go lair we're gonna strike through that just to see so you guys can see what's different then we're gonna go third plus fourth gas will come after that, okay? What? Why we still got the strike through here, dude? <laughs> it's, uh, here we go. Uh, third plus fourth gas. Um, I'm just trying to think like, I don't know, 12 drones on natural. Add the third and fourth gas. That seems like a pretty good marker. I think that's roughly when we did it this time. All right, guys, we're playing ZVP, 4,400 uh, MMR opponent. Which is nice. Let's send our drone down. Now we're sending it a bit early. Why are we sending it early? That's that's even earlier. That was like 130, 140 minutes. Because if there's a probe coming into block, we need to go take our third. And this way it's not delayed too long. But instead we go out, we see no probe, and then we build it. Okay. Overlord's gonna check outside and then move forward. Our other overlord, remember, we check the natural and then we go out the butthole of their base, trying to spot what tech our opponent's going for. Now we're gonna control click those there, and then we're gonna control click again click there and then there you don't really need to do it that way i don't know i just like wanted to describe the habit i had there because i realized i was doing it in an odd way not necessary all right guys build drones rally to gas while setting the actual hatchery rally point over there right we're rallying the eggs individually onto that gas looks like he probe scouted my expansion and went home because we saw a red dot on our side of the map and then we saw a red dot just returning home on his side on the mini map didn't pay it a lot of mind. Probably should have been a bit more wary to make sure I noticed it head backwards. Because otherwise you do need to bring a drone down to make sure you're not cannon rushed. Um, there's periods where I'm greedy against it and I don't scout for it. And there's periods where I preemptively pull a drone and am all over it. Just kind of depends how much people are cannon rushing on the ladder. If people aren't cannon rushing very much, I usually play a little bit greedy. That's the poker game of StarCraft, guys. Can't always play safe. Let's build those two queens and those four circlings. Can start pulling off gas once we get to 88 guys remember we want to leave one on gas in this matchup okay third base there take a fourth base there fifth base there why not actually let's take a fourth up the top i do like expanding in that pattern all right so remember he went home so we're going to send that zergling around and into his base and what do we see here second pylon so that's kind of where the tech has to be, guys. So we're just going to hide that overlord down there nearby. All right. Drone, drone. Inject, inject. Third hatchery. And remember, what do we do after the third hatchery, guys? We get the queen. And the overlord. Now, there's no tech. You might be like, what? So he's, he saw my overlord. So he said, I'm going to hide it at the front. Ha ha. And I go, no worries, I'll just scout with a ling at the front, which we do every game. So we see an oracles on the way, guys. 
Let's send a Ling to each base location. And now we know we are on the Stargate branch of the build. Remember, we're very specific on learning those two branches, okay? Now, we like to get that creep spread a little bit earlier. You'll notice now we're in Master's League. We're, we're definitely adapting and adjusting. So we built a big round of drones. We're building Overlords. That's going to complete the Ring of Vision. One more Overlord in the back. And what do we do, guys? We want to go straight to six Queens, remember? So we're already building another Queen. And 340, we want to build this uh, Spore Crawler in the main. A few seconds early is fine. And four minutes we want to put back on gas. But since I'm looking here, I might as well just do it now. Inject, inject. And build drones. We can rally to the third. And as soon as you want drones rallying out there, we will build a spore crawler. But we need more queens. So we're starting a fourth queen, a fifth queen. Ah, okay, he's taking a nice quick base. Let's move a ling out here to see if he does continue. Inject, inject. Queen. Alright guys, so that's going to bring us from one, two, three to six queens all these queens we're building okay now we don't have a spore in our uh in our third base or our natural yet so these queens are going to kind of hang out in this in-between area and we're going to respond as we see where the oracle comes from and remember i said actually build these spores at the same time didn't i so let's build those at the same time actually in next time just still stuck in my 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 habits guys all right so we've got eight drones on the base you guys know what that means second gas baneling nest and an evo chamber remember we're doing all of those at once oh here we go guys and you want to grab drones and pull them away if they dive see just click them on the other side of the mineral line and that there is perfect so we just happen to be pretty close with those queens which is fantastic inject 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 we did it out of order try to stick to the same order guys don't be lazy like that and um i don't know what else is going on so we're building zerglings right now but uh we do need a few more drones for this third base okay and we're gonna build fourth and fifth base we're gonna we see a twilight council upgrading we don't know exactly what units they're building yet so let's just go scout building drones behind it and stalkers are warping in so we know it's going to be blink stalkers so very standard style plus one melee and then layer start same time guys creep spread creep spread creep, inject 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 sorry uh what are we gonna do guys uh i said i was missing drones on my third I think we've got those now so we can do nothing but mass zerglings and we can try to get that double macro hatch in the main remember single upgrades are going to be really good uh in this matchup so there we go macro hatch in the main let's build a few more drones here i'd rather be a bit oversaturated rather than undersaturated guys inject 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 uh build lings build lings and we're gonna keep putting these ling spotters out because i don't want an army to just materialize on the map you know that that always sucks when that happens Building lots and lots of overlords here. Clicking them in the back. Shift one. All right. Queens, A move towards the oracle. Whenever you see these red dots on your side of the map, guys, always do that. And we don't have many creep tumors, do we, guys? <laughs> so we're going to queue up creep tumors and then shift A move those queens back to safety, okay? All right. So baneling speed's on the way. Inject, inject, inject. Massling bane. Now, at this point, he's not attacking me. So let's set up these guys. Alt 7, and they're going to go out and try to hit natural as a shield battery. Maybe maybe the natural, probably the third, that shield battery is a bit more exposed. They're going to be over here, okay? Behind this, time to transition, right? So we've got to drone up, set these rally points back. So I rallied my main and my natural to the natural, and then my third to its own mineral line, in case you guys didn't catch that. Remember, we do want to try to always make a bunch of units on 54 drones to stay safe. And then we're just going to drone up all those gases. Build drones, click the gas. Build drones, click the gas. That sort of stuff. We rally to the fourth now, which I'll build a spore crawler at. We're at 66. A little higher, technically. Um, oh, I forgot the hydrogen, guys. You've got to make the hydrogen when you start that gas transition. I'm always so late on it. Very lazy by me. All right, let's overseer scout. Let's also send a zergling in. Because we got to go, like, what the hell is he doing? Oh, he's going Colossus. Uh, okay. So, guys, if they go Colossus... You have two options. You can either go Hive or Spire, okay? Now, we're going to go for big backstabs. Because this is a scary army against Hydraling Bane. God damn. This is not what we wanted. We should have scouted this earlier. I saw the Stalker warping in, and I assumed it was going to be a big Blink follow-up. It was not. It was not that. So, we're, we're making a big pack of Banelings. And when he moves out, notice we've got a full ring of vision. Making, I'm making sure right now I have the lings in the right position because if he blindsides me, I'm dead. 
And we're going to backstab to buy time. At the same time, we're going to go straight for Hive because we need Vipers. And we're going to make Hydras buy this. You might think, well, Hydras, why are you building Hydras? But you just need anything. All right, he's moving out. He's moving out. So what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go Banelings first. And we're going to split Sumling Bane into there. And then everything else is just going to come here, okay? And these guys are just going to grab the Lings, move them in, let the Banelings blow that up. Click some units in there as well. Oh, he's going to keep pushing in. Okay, so we have to base trade, guys. All right, so these guys are going to run, hide up in the main. And we've got to control click the overlords in a base trade. Always hide your overlords. Try to build a uh, roach horn. I think it'd probably be one of the best things as ravages could, could win us this game. Now, we do want to split lings to attack the nexus, guys. Attack the nexus. Attack the nexus. And don't want to let any of these guys escape as well, okay? Now, we can grab a few drones and just hide those on the other side of the map, but... Oh, shit! I said don't let them escape, man. What the hell are you doing? These guys are all going to die, of course. But it is what it is. Going to try and stop him escaping. This is a really good timing attack by him. We're just trying to A move, move command. A move, move command. Oh, he saves two of them. Well done. Hide the overlords. All right. Now, why roaches, you might wonder? Um, guess the reason? Hide, hide the drones. They're going to die. It's all good. It is what it is. Uh, roaches are basically... They don't take bonus damage from light. That's the main thing. <laughs> um, other than that, I guess... Uh, yeah, we can drone up. I'm building roaches, but I don't know if they're necessary. Yeah, we're going to try and drone up this base and then this base as well. Alright, we're going to send one Ling to deal with that. Now, I can't make Banelings, so I really cannot fight his army. But what I might be able to do is just backstab him and especially if we get enough roaches out that can be huge notice i'm not supply blocked so we're gonna make some ravages he's got also do i not have an overseer okay i've got one overseer so like i said guys bad scouting for me i should have realized it was colossus tech earlier and that's going to potentially cost us this game um i made what we call a hard read so a hard read is where you see something small and you make it like a really big read off it like oh you're going for Mass blink because I saw one stalker warping him, right? And if you think about that statement, I think you can realize why, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, fact or whatever, right? So we've got this army. I wonder if he has an uh, observer. Oh, he's there. Okay. I mean, we've got like the Ravager army here, guys. I'm uh, gonna have to build a few more overlords. Okay, we lost a roach that was popping there, which is unfortunate. He's not like actually taking the bases. Yeah, I don't think he has enough money for that. We'll find out, of course. He might be. Yeah, he is. All right, but he's only got like one probe. That's that's his whole problem. Okay, so we've got the lings ready for the backstab. This army's like the distraction, essentially, right? Okay, we don't want to send them all in, guys, just like that many. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right, go after the Nexus, I guess. I'm going to try and kill this Colossus if we can. Are they blocked? Okay, these guys can run away. <laughs> so, I mean, we killed his only probes, which is like a thing in of itself, you know? So, as long as we can pull back, we've still got tons more lings. If he chases me, we're in a good spot, okay? You can drone this base up, grab another one, take this base as well. I have income, he doesn't, guys. That's, that's the whole thing right now. I have income, he doesn't. Can he build new probes? Almost certainly. I don't know how many, though. Gonna send those lings up into his main again? Oh, maybe not. He's pulling back. Okay. I'd like to sneak these guys. <laughs> so we're just gonna send in like 18 lings at a time while getting a mass roach army up, okay? So we're building this. These queens are also gonna spread creep. 
Uh, that can spread there, that can spread there, I guess. Oh, hello. Okay. Oh, he left half of his army. Okay, that'll do it. That's fine. Part of his army got left behind, guys. Okay. The Lings are going to once again go around to backstab. These guys can take the gases. Can spread some creep. Go down here and inject that one. I don't think he has anything there. These overlords are all hidden. Alright, you guys can go there. You guys can go there. Alright. So what we're doing, guys, we're going to try and kill the prism. There we go, we got the oracle as well. I think I killed a ravager. But that's the uh, tax we pay for being an idiot. We'll split this guy off to catch the stalker. Build some gas. Build some gas. This might take a while, he says. <laughs> it might. That's okay. No problem. Oh, we haven't built a roach horn yet. <clears throat> okay. Drones, drones, drones. But I mean, the thing is my economy is growing, right? He doesn't have detection anymore either. It's a huge problem for him. We can send changelings through. Um, he's done a really good job with the stasis traps, but without an economy, nah, it is an issue. We can spread creep. As long as we're able to just calmly reset, <clears throat> we should be fine here. Let's see if I can just kill him. Just use blink. Spread creep, spread creep. Just kind of getting vision with this creep as much as we can, guys. And uh, I see a red dot up there, so I imagine it's a stalker. Send one thing up there. Alright, he's trying to trap me. Oh, there we go. That's that's dead. Because he can't push me out of position in time, you know? So the Nexus goes down there. And uh, we could have even stayed on top, potentially, and killed these units because they're recalling into a Lynx around. GG. Um, obviously, he didn't have an economy. I did, so we were all good. So it kind of just reminds us really well of our, our base trade checklist, essentially. If you can actually drill this into your memory and even practice it a few times, you'll be amazing at this. The number of players are like, ah, oh, man, that's a, you know, one in 20 situation. Like, when are you ever going to, how could I be that good in that situation or whatever, right? Like, come on, man, this is, this is ridiculous. Um, I think it's just one of those things where what you want to do is you want to just kind of say, hey, but like, if I actually take the time to practice this, then I can be in such a good spot. So if you're committing to the base trade, what do you do? In order of priority, split army into all their bases, okay? Right? You want to get on top of all their economy. If you kill their production, that's good as well. I would say just get in all their bases generally is going to be really good, right? Stops them from building up any core defensive force. Your units should naturally be tearing down economy and production pretty quickly. So that should be great. Number two. Um, pull back workers slash hide workers you know, slash pull away. So basically it's like, that's where you pull your workers back from the front of the push, hide them in the back of your base or try to get them out of there. If they're attacking your third, pull them over to your fourth and your fifth. It, better to escape, better to escape than hide in main, right? In a base trade, usually you're gonna get them cornered in your main unless you manage to hide them off in the edge and they somehow don't notice because it's too stressful. Um, okay, so beyond that, what do we wanna do? Split army into all their bases, pull back workers, overlords. This is the number one advantage of Zerg. Pull all your overlords to the back corner. 
bonus points if you already did this as a habit. And you'll notice a lot of my overlords are all in one position in the back, which can get clicked back, right? Uh, it also becomes a lot easier once you train your pattern recognition skills, because, yeah, the earlier you recognize what's happening, the earlier you can go into this checklist as well, right, guys? For sure. Um, pull all your overlords back to the corner. Bonus points are if you already did this as a habit. Uh, you know, with rallying the, the overlord eggs there, right? Uh, what do we do then, guys? Uh, rebuild a key text structure for, you know, at the safest edge base, right? Because they're going to go up into the core of your, your tech, right? So what do we want to do? Often it's like, in that case, Roach Warren, something like that. Sometimes it's a lurker den. If you've got a big Hydra army out, you want to be able to keep morphing lurkers after the base trade's kind of going in. Uh, and then there's things like focus down, you know, Nexus slash Command Center. Um prioritize getting up the Terran ramp, right? Uh, before the tanks, you know, are all sieged and, 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 and wall is up, right? There's all these little extra bonus things, um, you know, uh, you know, bonus points, I guess we can call this. Um, focus down Nexus before recall. Uh, yeah, I think that's about, that's the main one. Um, and then send a handful of drones to the other side of the map and start a base there. Hunt down their workers. Don't let them escape. And you can win without ever fighting their army, right? Now, we almost did that well enough, and I kind of slowed down on the micro as I was explaining it. We let two probes get away because of that. I would not have let those two probes get away if I was fully unchained and playing as fast as I possibly could. But uh, yeah, that's that's really key. So I used to actually make a mistake in this scenario where I'd, I'd basically grab all these drones and run away and start building a hatchery. Problem is you want to keep mining, guys. You really you do want to keep mining. So uh, if he's going into the natural and he's not sending units to that base, sure. Otherwise, grab those drones, send it to this base. We want to try and mine. You might mine an extra one or 2,000 minerals in the course of that base trade, which is game-changing. And if you can get like 30, 40 workers across the map as well, when he does start heading to that top right corner, go hide them down here, or even preferably, because I was here, it would have been more optimal to take this base or this base. You want to try and expand to opposite corners if possible. So if they go to kill one, you can like backstab them and then just run your drones around the opposite corner. Pig, what if both players are following your rules? Then you're going to have a good base trade, aren't you? <laughs> You're both gonna you're both gonna play a good game of StarCraft. That's what's gonna happen. <laughs> it's like gonna be the rare situation where both players prepare for a base trade very well. It's gonna be wild. Um obviously uh if we look at it, Bruce Leroy probably should have tried to warp in like a ball of zealots in the main or something like that. Um your or a big wall of zealots at the third, but like with no cannons up or anything, it's gonna be tough. But if he was able to get up a big zealot warp in. Um, I think he just probably just warped in Stalkers at the front. But if he was able to, warp in some Zealots. Obviously, Archons would be amazing if you get some Archons and Cannons and Batteries. And if you hold on to any of these bases, it's going to give him a, a big, big advantage in this game. But because he doesn't, he's in big trubs. Now, let's go back in this game and talk about my scouting and how bad it was, guys. So we should have scouted more, shouldn't we? What should we have scouted? Well, the Robo Bay, preferably. Now remember, we go plus one melee and lair, which is a good way to play, right? Oh, lair timing, right? I don't know, lair starts with 100 gas right after plus one melee. Yeah, 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 yeah. We, we wrote that down earlier. But the moment the lair's done, we should always be overseer scouting. Basically, in every matchup, unless you feel you have 100% understanding of what your opponent's doing, that's just like a golden rule of StarCraft. It's like, hey, my lair's done here at 630. Make an Overseer, get a full scout. Because if I went through for a full scout, I would have seen the Robo Bay and the double Robo. And I'd be like, oh, shit. Instantly, I dropped that infestation. But let's say I dropped that at seven minutes. I think I've got enough time to get a Hive up, guys. Get some Vipers on the way. I might be able to fight this front on. My Hydroden was late along with those gases. You can see my infestation pit wasn't until about 7.35 pretty late man pretty late that i saw these clothes would it have been early enough by the way maybe not maybe it wouldn't have maybe i still would have had to base trade but you can imagine we go straight hive maybe we can fight this front on maybe we give up a base start taking some more damage but uh but then we can take the big fight and you know what 
That was very late on my gas transition. So let's talk about that. Because if I want to fight this army, I could with Mass Hydraling Bane. If I come in from two sides and sandwich it with enough Hydraling Bane, where the Banelings are like rolling into the middle of the Stalkers and the Colossus and the Zerglings and Hydras are coming in. Sure, I don't have enough gas to do that though. Why do I not have enough gas? Because I saw Oracles into what I thought was a Stalker play. And I decided, well, a lot of the times they come and attack you with Stalkers, right? With Blink and plus one. So I was like, cool, I'll make a lot of units then. I'll make a lot of units off 54 drones and only start droning up a bit later here at like close to seven minutes, which is very late. So I let him get a big economic advantage because of that misread on what was happening in the game. Now, what's something I could have done here at this point, guys? If you build a whole bunch of army expecting your opponent to attack and then they don't attack you, what could you possibly do to take advantage of that situation. Any uh, any takers in the Twitch chat? Oh, I, I know that was a sarcastic question. I mean, Link Me, you'd have to be absolutely brain damaged if it wasn't. Um, even in even in chat where I can obviously not tell if someone's being sarcastic or not. That one was that one was stupid enough. It was clearly it was clearly yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> like <laughs> so let's let's take a look at the units tab, guys, and say what could I have achieved if I attacked right now with my 80 zerglings with plus one melee about to finish. Even 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 without the plus one melee done because my Evo was a little late this game. I could I could fudge him up, couldn't I? I mean, he can warp in a few gateway units and he's almost got a colossus out. But you can see he's got nothing to defend. He has one oracle on this map. And uh, I don't even know where that oracle is right now. Here it is. I mean, one oracle is good. It's not going to stop 80, 80, 90 Zerglings, right? I could run in, click some of them on the battery, get some in the mineral line. I mean, we're going to do some good damage. And we're also going to see what's going on. So if you do mass the, the Zerglings and stuff, you probably should keep an eye out for, okay, if they're not attacking, let's at least poke forward. And if they seem to not have many units, let's commit to a bit of a fight. Would have been a pretty logical thing to do there. So that's, that's not a bad way to play. Uh, obviously, I was a bit behind because of this. And I did finally start my Hydra transition here. We got up to six casters. But you can see that in this game, we could have done that a lot earlier. So what are some other scouting tells with the Overseer? If you don't see the tech, that your opponent's being very kind of economic. Well, early on, I should have known I was very safe because he had a shield battery there. I didn't see a shield battery there. So there's all these signs of my opponent being very defensive and greedy. Shield battery, shield battery, you know? If I scout it, I'd also see upgrade structure, tech structure, tech structure, lots of signs of greed. Your opponent can't really hit a decisive, sick blink stalker timing if they've got a robo and a forge and a twilight. So even without seeing the second robo in the robo bay, that's big. And seeing these gases on the third, if I was poking around with zerglings a little bit better, I would have seen those gases and say, oh, okay, it's six minutes, let's transition into hydras already. Instead, it's closer to seven minutes when I made that decision. A minute might not sound like a lot of time, but like I said, even if I don't know it's Colossus, if I just have more gas to make more Banelings and Hydras and come in with that surround, I can probably deal with that army, even though Colossus are amazing against Hydraling Bane. Now remember guys, I should be building 17 pool, just because it allows my queens to get out a little bit quicker. Like, like there's nothing wrong with, I guess 18 pool is not the end of the world. It allows us to sync our queens up, but if, if you guys want to be safer and you still want to stick to that 17 pool, don't, don't be afraid to do it. It's totally fine. Um, don't feel like you have to copy exactly the changes I've done down to the letter. The 17 pool is a little bit safer than this, to be fair. Uh, all right, let's rally to the natural now. And let's put this overlord across the map. So that guy can come out there. This guy can go there. Next overlord's going to go outside our natural. And then our fourth overlord will go in the middle of the map. All right, let's rally these guys to the natural now. The ones that are bouncing around that aren't doubled up properly. Looks like there's still a third one there. And we're just going to need to hold these guys here until that hatchery finishes, guys. So the moment the hatchery finishes, we're just going to say return cargo, build two queens, and... Oh, accidentally built four lings this time. That's okay, just a little bit more scouting than in the other games, guys. Uh, Overlord's about to confirm that it's a hatchery first. We see creep. That means it is a hatchery first. Otherwise, that wouldn't be there yet. And we do need that 28 Overlord, guys. We're at 29. Oh my god, we're late! Obviously, it's not a big deal. But uh, definitely don't want to delay that any longer, you know? We're going to build an extra queen on the natural. Um, and that way, we can always make the lair in the main. Just so it's a little bit better hidden. And you know what, guys? Two more drones. Two gases. Let's go change the rally point. Inject, inject. And we can try to shoo off an Overlord. We're not really planning to commit anything there. 
We're just going to attack it a little bit to... Uh... Oh, he's going to scout. Okay. I didn't realize there was Lings coming across the map, guys. It's all right. And we're going to go up into that main base. Try and bypass that. Try and cut him off. All right. Can we get any damage here, guys? Just trying to target these, these guys coming out of the gas here. Looks like we managed to get two of them. Ling Speed's not making for him, so it looks like he's playing the same sort of gasless opening as me, guys. And remember, move to the other side to shoot the Overlord in towards your base. Lair immediately, he sees it, but it is what it is. I'm okay with him seeing it, guys. Remember, double Evo Roach Warren. And he did actually pull that back, so good reaction, but he's got Creep coming out, which is a little scary. Just gonna check he doesn't have a third there. And 12 workers on the natural equals take the na take the gases, guys. If you're a little late, it's not the end of the world. Now, we're going to try and kill that. I would not chase this far if he had link speed. But remember, we saw no wiggly lines above the spawning pool. So we, we know that he doesn't have link speed. That's the whole the whole thingamajig. The whole scatamadoodle. You know? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you guys know what I'm saying. All right, guys. So Lizzie and Cersei have been keeping those injects going really nicely. Notice I'm not vocalizing that as much. We're focusing on other things, but we're still trying to be clean on those injects. Inject Lizzie, inject Cersei. Same as always, gang. No third base for my opponent. So, notice in the other games I wasn't worried about scouting. This time I am, guys. Why? Because he could also be going muters. We don't, we don't really know what's happening right now. Now, I'm actually over-droning a little bit. I built a few more drones there. Those are meant to be uh, roaches. So, meant to just stop at 45. We're going to start this third base. We've got a Spire on the way in the back. Inject. Inject. Build some roaches. Did I just see an Overseer? I thought I saw a red dot on the minimap. My, my ring of vision around my bases is not that great. So he might be able to get in here and scout me. And what are we running into, guys? Try to send the Changeling in. Very good scouting denial. So we can't get in, but we see double upgrades. That tells us everything we need to know. He's going double upgrades. Okay. Now, it could be Lings. It could be uh, could be Roaches. We really don't know. We're going to just pull the Overseer back. We're going to try and make another Overseer and send that across the map. <laughs> I'm like, okay, I, I can't tell what's happening. But because his Roach Horn's so late, I think it might be Zergling. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the Roaches in the mineral line. This Queen's going to hold position. I mean, obviously, it could be just a fake, and he's going muted like I am. Which would suck, because I'm letting my upgrades finish. I'm going to go back to those units, you know? So we've got five muters building. We're going to build a few more droney drones. Uh, one more muter. And it is mass. Okay, it is mass. Okay. Here's a really advanced thing, guys. Check this out. So we're going <laughs> to wall those roaches in. We're going to build more uh, dudes here. And we're going to wall off this base as well. Okay, these guys are going to have to come and fight. Woo! Oh my lord. Okay. I did, do you guys like that Evo Chamber wall off? That was pretty slick, right? If they're going mass ling, all you need to do is limit surface area, okay? That's all you need to do, ever. Let's get plus two. So even if he gets plus one carapace, he'll need plus two. Otherwise, he'll get two shots. Build a few more queens just to help our defensive force. They'll be always on duty defending. And because it's third so late, I think we're in a really good spot. Overseer's going to join these guys. I'm just going to pull these drones back, guys. Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. Okay. Split some roaches there. Try to defend. <laughs> Get the queen in the gap. Oh, she didn't get in the gap in time. Oh my god. Okay, drones are fighting. Drones are running. Alright. Alright, we're on 51, 55 drones, guys, which is pretty good. Our muters are getting taken out. He's swapping into his own muters. Wow. Really clever swap here. Unfortunately for him, he doesn't have enough to deal with me. So my muters are going to hide. These guys are going to hide. So the muters are going to do a bit of a backstab, guys. The roaches are going to go for a base trade. 
because I don't think he can afford anything on the ground right now. We're building a lot of spores, a lot of queens, and the roaches are going in, as are the muters. The muters fly in on the top and hit those. The roaches have been spotted. They're just a throw away at this point, okay? Going to take a fourth base there. We're going to try to spread creep to it. We're going to try and rally drones to that base. Oh shit, these guys aren't getting in right now. I should have microed those in. That was a bit of a throwaway, wasn't it? So we're going to go infestation pit hydrogen, guys. Our muters are going to hide. We didn't really kill any drones here. He did a really good job running away. So well done. This is once again another Masters 1 opponent, guys. So you'd be wary here as a... Uh... That can uh, get a little bit out of control if we're not careful. We don't have any armor upgrades, which are actually the most important. Oh, I didn't realize he was going so YOLO. Spores are fighting, as are our queens. We're trying desperately to hang on here, guys. Our drones are dying, but we're building more ones. He went so many muters, that was a wild choice. I wonder if he has a corner base. Do you guys think he has a corner base? Whenever they've got muters, the only way you can scout is dropping overseer changelings from the corner of the map, guys. So we're going to try to focus on that. Uh, that can go there. Okay. Trying to put three spores in close formation there. Trying to make roaches. I realized I'm very low on the ground defense right now, so that's something I gotta fix up. These guys are just defense duty up there. That's it. I never built the uh, extra other units, so we're going to bring these queens down, guys. <laughs> Try to drone this fourth base. So let's get these Hydra upgrades going. Um, 72 drones, apparently. These four roaches, I'm just going to try to run into his base. Maybe he doesn't have vision there. Um, more roaches at home, because I don't know what the hell he's doing right now. And yeah, even if that just distracts him for a minute, that, that should be enough, I think, to, to just buy me time to, like, probe this bloody base up, right? Okay. You can get a hive now. Alright, we can get plus two Kara. Hydra's on the way. Trying to pull back into these spores. He's massively overcommitted to those, which is great. So just shift-click those uh, drones that we can, guys. Whew. Oh my lord. Uh, other Hydra upgrade is on the way. Did I ever build those Infestors? I didn't build Infestors, did I? Alright, we're trying to make Infestors now. Oh my lord. Uh, <laughs> he's really harassing like a beast, guys. <laughs> oh, he's definitely caught me off guard with this cool style that he's playing. Inject, 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 inject. Put just a few... Oh! Uh, uh, uh. Run those away. Got a few more drones here, guys. Okay, these guys are down there now. Everything else, main army still up here. All right, the single mutilist can just go on my control group. Main army. All right, uh, lurker den is very late, guys. We're gonna just try and get three three for now. We've got five infestors, which are really good versus Ling Bane, but they're no good versus ultras, which is of course the bigger concern right now. So what we're going to do, these spores are going to move out here. Okay, so we're going to move up here with our army, guys. He's going to pick off some gases, but if he hangs around too long, then he will be in doo-doo. Uh, we're going to send this overseer through the main, check if that is the case. Has he got a hive? We're also going to send these changelings in, just kind of see what's up.
need the overlords to pop. Alright, more hydras, more roaches. Build new ones and send these ones down. He's on lair tech, which means we can actually win with Roach Hydra and Festa guys. Kill these changelings? Alright. So I was thinking I have to turtle and play lurkers, but we see no hive, which means he only has muters and zerglings. So this is the point where we go, oh, okay, he's actually exhausted from trying to kill me. Like, this is great. So we're going to build a few spines across to make us, like, a bit more base trade proof, I guess. Um, build a few more drones. And actually, I probably should have been maxing on Roach Hydra to commit to it a bit more. But it is what it is. Because I really do feel like Roach Hydra with, like, 2-2, two, two, soon to be 3-2. Five Infestors with Double Fungal. I mean, that's an army you should not be able to kill, really. Okay, these guys down here. Yeah, I saw Lings running to the south with that changeling. Good thing I did, guys. Oh my lord. What? Oh my god, what? Where did he come from? Oh my god. Cotton Eye Joe, man. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Uh, oh my god. So he distracted me down there, man. Do we have enough to defend? All right, we've got a few Vipers on the way as well. Holy crap, that was a crazy attack, man. All right, let's make a few Lurkers here. Definitely should have already had a few Lurkers. I was so cocky because I was like, oh, I got Fungal. Like, that'll deal with the Banelings. Let's just get a big mobile army and do this. And of course, uh, we see what eventuated from that. Let's move these Spores down, guys. Oh! 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 Sorry, guys. Apologies, but uh, if you guys could please support. If you're on YouTube, um, please, you know, click the sub button. Check out my Patreon below the stream. Or if you do want to do a super chat, I really appreciate the people that have been doing that. I'm going to need to buy at least a few pairs of underwear if we have any more fights like that after this game. So just remember, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, what am I helping to fund when I support a streamer or a content creator? Um, with me, there's a lot of transparency around that. And that's really what I strive for, you know, in my business as a whole. So thank you very much for your support. And I hope you guys can help support Clean Undies for me for the next few weeks. Okay. Um, I'm going to build just lurkers and parasitic bombs are going to go off, guys. So we drop parasitic bombs, then we go gather more energy. He's trying to do the spready, but while he's spreading, he sits there, gets some damage done. So we've got all of his, his guys weak. I don't have many guys that actually shoot up, which is a problem. But uh, inject, inject, and inject. Uh, we can see that verse muters can get a bit frantic, and there was definitely a few mistakes I made this game. Um, you know, I was shocked by the number of guys that he made, but the main mistake I made was that, uh, that big uh, roach attack that I just A-moved on his wall. You gotta get it into their economy before you just A move it, guys. That was a, a kind of classic silly, silly billy maneuver by me. Okay, here we go, guys. Now, now I think we're in a much better position. Now, notice I'm just gonna queue my Vipers and Lurkers, uh, Vipers and Infestors, my spellcasters, to follow my Lurkers, making a bunch more of them and basically nothing but Hydras from here. Uh, I'm also gonna grab one Overseer, Alt Zero, and just tell it to follow a Lurker. This way, these guys aren't gonna get A moved into the front of a fight. You know, I just keep following these guys on them, right? All right, guys, let's go for it. Now, we can see his armies here. Mineral field depleted. Where does his meat is that? And we're going to try to spread that. So lurkers are like siege tanks, guys. Oh, shit. Uh, so we can just kind of branch a bit of Roach Hydra out in front of this. Okay, and you can see, he's, okay, we're going to send those Vipers back. We're building more Hydras. And you see, I'm like, I'm like, okay, come fight into this, bro. Let's grab a few Lurkers, unseed. You just shift, shift queue them up to, like, get in the annoying positions, guys. And we can just kind of A-move down here as well. These guys can do their work. Very hard for him to deal with this. So my Vipers going to grab more energy. I'm going to make more Vipers probably. 
He's going to come in with a nice uh, spready. Uh, or a nice uh, surround, I should say, of units. We already did some pretty good damage. So I'm alright to, to just kind of pull home now. Now I'm actually swapping my hotkeys around. Something I like to do is have like a primary spellcaster and a not as important spellcaster, guys. And we're going to just drop parasitic bombs, aim of our hydras in there. See what we can get done. He did some really good dives on me. I really liked his aggressive commitments, even though some of them turned south. It required me having really good calm poise. If I was even a little panicky in these situations, a lot of my spellcasters would have died without getting those spells off. And that would have been a big, big issue. So that's actually huge. Your dog was giving the speakers a funny look. GG's. Alright, so um, that obviously worked out quite nicely towards the end, but there was a point where that big Roche move happened, and I thought it was a fantastic game for me up to that point. Now, the double Evo Chamber wall was very fancy. I didn't need to do that, probably, but uh, I really wanted to ensure that I didn't sur get surrounded. Remember I said earlier, I already was suspecting it was Mass Ling, because he's only on two base. I've seen double Evos upgrading, but I hadn't scouted, so technically he could be going Spire and he faked the upgrades? Unlikely. It's pretty rare someone fakes two upgrades like that while going Spire. That was my first thing, right? When I saw that. And then I also saw that the Roach Warren wasn't finished very late in the game. And I was like, okay, well, it's definitely not a Roach Push. So I didn't really worry about a Roach Push on the ground. I was doing my standard thing. Building muters, building drones. And it was only when I saw the Lings come out, which, by the way, look at my Overlord vision, guys. It was pretty damn good. Other than the Overlord, which I've just sent in from the... I guess this guy got pushed back by Queens. Yeah, he could he could have snuck by me on the south. I could have had a bit better Overlord vision. I could have had a bit better, but because he's pushed his creep out, I would have needed to shuffle extra Overlords forward in order to do that. So it's hard to have complete vision. But luckily, we did see him moving out. And I basically said, look, these guys, if they get surrounded, they'll get wrecked by, by Lings. Now, arguably, I could just pull them here. There's actually there and there. You could probably fit all the roaches mostly behind these minerals. Where they can't get surrounded, but uh, yeah. Um, awesome. So I basically immediately, I'm like, okay, this is obviously not great. Now, what else I could have done here is I could have pulled this queen back. And even maybe swapped the queens, because this queen has all the energy. So take Cersei, chuck Cersei in front of the wall and say, take her. And then you can use the nurse queen to, to basically drop three transfusers on her, keeping her alive a lot longer. It's gonna buy you a bit of time there. Um, the other thing is I couldn't wall off with an Evo here, so you could tell I went, oh shit. And I started attacking that creep tumor. He committed, he could have broken in, but he didn't have many lings left by then. So that's a very good trade for me, all in all. Obviously, I let one of the Evos finish, so I've got to break that down. This is an amazing position to be in, but because I wasn't able to get the follow-up scout, that was a big issue. And check it out, guys. The Overseer's right bloody there. So if I'd kept scouting to confirm if it was muters or not, could I have continued to go mute as myself? I think so. Why? Because his third's not done. I could drop double gas on my third right now. I've already got six muters in the sky. I would start plus one flyer carapace. Have faster gas on the third, which means I've got more, more, um, more muters out. And, and I'd, I'd be happy to play mass muter. Now, the problem with playing mass muter here is that his lings are well upgraded. So I'm not really going to be able to support my muters with zerglings. That would be a horrendous idea. I will have to play muters for air control with like roaches on the ground. Roaches cost gas. It's a bit problematic, but I've already got 15 roaches out, 14 roaches, which I think is enough. So I think it works out kind of okay there. Um, we end up cleaning up the overlords. He ends up continuing to do ling run buys. I'm way ahead economically, but I just don't realize that he's playing the muters guys for a bit too long. And because of that, I'm a little too slow to get my um, my droning up and my anti-air up. If I knew he was doing it, I would be dropping a fourth base. I'd be spreading a creep tumor there, creep tumor here. I'd already be building a bunch more queens. And then I would time it out to about now when the spy is just finishing or a little after the spy is finished. I'd be like, okay, muters are going to be on the way. Drop spores. And we'd be like, okay, spore crawler, spore crawler, spore crawler, spore crawler. A couple ones connecting the bases as well, like six or seven spores. But because I've already been droning up, if I spot that earlier, I already am at 70 drones. So losing 10 drones to spore crawlers, losing a few to a ling run by or a bit of meter harass doesn't hurt you as much. But if you're down in the 50s and then you lose a few drones and then you build a bunch of spores, watch my work account here. Because I'm, I'm, I'm like, oh shit, I should have anticipated that. But he did such a good job keeping me busy. 
Look at my worker count. I could have been at 70 workers maintaining the whole time. A massive lead versus 44. Instead, it ends up being pretty similar worker counts. And he does some fantastic muted control on top of it. Now, these roaches, I don't know how he saw those. I guess he just knows that they, they're missing, right? Swarm is under Did he see them go that way? I think he's just like, hey, where the fuck are the roaches? Like, I just flew in. There's no roaches. They must be sneaking across. I've got an overlord on the top. I've flown through the middle. It has to be on the bottom. It's interesting where he moves because he's like, oh, shit. He, at first, he thinks they're just like here. And he's like, wait, they're further across the map than I realize. And then he frantically flies further backwards and does manage to, uh, to anticipate. And he finds them. And he's like, oh, okay, there they are. Now, this was a huge mistake for me, right? This was 27 roaches that could have kept me completely secure on the ground for the rest of this game with no worry but anti-air. Instead, I A-move them, and I'm like, yeah, they'll do good damage. Now, luckily, my muters do cripple his third economy at the same time by killing five, six, seven, eight drones. But if these guys ran into the main base and managed to get even 10 or 15 more drones, his economy is in the shitter. We're massing drones behind this. I'm recovering. I know my mineral lines aren't saturated. This doesn't feel like a great position to be in. But we were a little slow to run in there, and then he did an amazing job pulling every queen to block his ramp, pulled all of his drones back to his main, and I was like, ah, shit. And just the fuelings and queens that tanked this out for him stop him from taking any economic damage other than what the muters did, which was excellent. So really well played. Now, what I should have done with my muters is cleaned up this overlord. I didn't realize that were there, because if I got rid of that, I could have been sneaking roach run buys down the bottom and the top to keep his muters back for a long time, and that would have been a very nice situation. But as it is, I'm only up 10 drones at the end of this, maybe a little more. And uh, and that makes this situation really scary because he's up at 16 muters. He can start just killing score crawlers. And yeah, he's trading muters for it. It's not cheap. But if he ever gets rid of all your queens, things get really bad. Like, I had to bring my muters into fight, which I was obviously not planning on fighting with an inferior muter count. I'd given up on the muter battle because I scouted his muters way too late. And it's just too late to go back into your own muter list because if you've already dumped your gas into tons of other stuff. Now, I should have got a few Infestors out in the midst of this action, and if I built those earlier, this would have been a much more chilled out game. Uh, I also, by throwing away my Roaches and not rebuilding any, let my Queens get surrounded, and this is a huge problem. He also does a great job of catching those Spores on the move, but luckily they do get down anyway. At the end of the day, he's pretty damn all in. He's only on 52 workers, and whilst he took two gases, he never really built the big round of drones that I think could have cemented a victory for him. So if Killjoy in the midst of all this, after one of those big rounds of muters says, okay, I'm diving, but behind this I'm droning for a full minute, I think if he droned up, he could have got a fourth and a fifth base same time, um, droned up a bit harder, and then started doing like Bane Speed run buys a lot earlier. And rather than getting flyer upgrades, he really needed to focus on Bane Speed. The earlier the Bane Speed hits, imagine if I'm dealing with Bane Speed at like 11 minutes, for instance. Let's take a look. What have I got at 11 minutes? I have 11 roaches and a couple queens. And yeah, I've got them set up for the baneling run because I'm aware of that. But I mean, banelings could literally run in from this angle, run right past my queens, get in my natural and main, and kill all my drones. Banelings could roll in here, kill all my drones. So if he got to the banelings earlier, uh, I would have been dead. And that all comes off that giant wasted roach attack that he handled really well, that he did a great job of anticipating that they were moving through the south of the map and shutting those down and then doing really good muter harassment. So... If he went Bane Speed, we would have been in trubs. And you'd say, well, how do you handle Bane Speed, guys? You just split roaches off to cover the flanks. And then eventually you have some lurkers that you leave around as well. But I wasn't at that point yet because of those earlier mistakes I made. So that's that's the situation we found ourselves in. That's why we had to kind of dig so deep and force this to the later stage. Now, he ends up going for a crazy Baneling attack that honestly was very close to taking me out, guys. It was very close to taking me out. Because it was just such an immense number of units and uh, I didn't really get any good fungals off. I got like one good fungal, I think. He does some good Ling Harass. You can see how good those plus two melee Zerglings are. They run in, they run out and uh, cause me a lot of trouble. Now my saving grace in this game uh, was that I was pre-split with my units a bit. Like they were kind of spread out. I had some units down here, not on a control group. Some roaches up there, not on a control group. So when this Baneling attack hits, it's not as bad as it could be. However, if you've seen that late lair, no hive, late hive, late hive, no hive upgrading like I did, make the lurkers as well. Infestors are amazing, but they need to be actively cast, whereas lurkers are just going to do the job. You chuck a lurker here, a lurker here, lurker here, lurker here. 
As long as they got spores nearby so they can't get focused down by the mutalisks, they're going to be so, so efficient, right? And uh, he did a pretty good job rolling these bad boys in. I guess my only criticism would be I think some banelings could have split into the main and the natural, but uh, it's quite hard to actually execute that. These banes as well. Where are they going? Oh, okay, yeah. Interesting. So he thought my army would be down here, so he kind of runs past. If these banelings diverted north a little quicker, that would have been really good for him. But instead, they're a little slow to react. And we do end up landing like what? Two, two decent fungals. He gets some pretty juicy hits. He could have got all those drones on that base. In general, rather than trying to kill a player in these scenarios, I always am aiming more for the economy than anything else. And I'll micro a big pack of like lings and muters that come in at the same time, but I'll always have banelings that are just not control grouped. Click the mineral line, click the mineral line, click the mineral line sort of thing. And no matter what, you don't divert those to any other target, I think is a really good way to do the baneling roll-ins. I also think since he went overlord speed, if he did a mass ling drop in the main, that would have been a big problem for me. But at the end of the day, the efficiency started to get just out of control. We started to get some big juicy fungals, and even though we weren't able to finish off that many mutalisks, you can kind of see the unit slots tab start to get a little bit out of control. Uh, Vipers and lurkers entering the field are just units he can't handle. You know, he's going to start a lurker transition, but that's a very technical army. Different upgrades required, and it takes a long time to get there. Um, now, interestingly, in this game, I made a weird decision early as well. I know this is a lot of analysis, guys, but so much happened in this game. I went for plus two range, saying even if he gets carapace, my roaches will still two-shot him. Problem, carapace is the more important upgrade, guys. It's a much more important... If you know they're going upgraded zerglings, or you even, even... Even here, being suspicious of it, I could have started carapace, potentially. I probably wouldn't, because I need the gas for mutalisks here at the five-minute mark. But after the mutas are built, I would definitely be going carapace, because carapace is so important against zerglings. They do such little damage, so every but they attack very fast. Every point of damage is massive. Mutalisks have bounce damage, so carapace is important there as well. So the lack of carapace upgrades early definitely hurt me and made defending this a little bit harder than it needed to be. All right, guys, what's up? We've got a Zerg vs. Terran. We're actually going to be playing Wanky again. Uh, Wanky's going to get all hanky spanky here. Uh, what a name, man. What a name. Oh, okay. Now, Wanky played very aggressive earlier today, guys, with a 3 axe Reaper. Uh, but we're still just going to play completely standard. Obviously, we're not going to make any blind counter adjustments. It's a good way to get kind of wrapped up in knots. Don't get me wrong, if someone has a very specific build that you struggle with that they do every game, sure, go ahead, blind counter it, you know? If your opponent's a, a deep expert at a very difficult strategy, but <clears throat> we're not going to make any assumptions. We're still going to be doing this in the same structure as always. So we take the gas, we take the pool, you know, of course, rally to the natural with the hatchery, and rally that last drone manually to the gas. Overlord's still just chilling out front. <clears throat> Obviously that, if you see an SCV or a marine come in from a weird angle, that's the main thing you're looking for there. And as this natural's almost finished, about a minute 50, you can start to pull to... Oh, hello. Interesting. I was going to say you can pull off gas, but then I realized we don't actually do that, do we? With this build. Not until link speed. Alright, guys, we're going to build four lings. I'm not actually building an extra overlord yet, but I'm about to. Even though it looks like we'll make it to the pillar, um, there's a good chance that he actually... So we build another overlord, put that out there. That he brings out like a barracks to spot the high ground to kill it. So we're already building the extra overlord uh, up the top. That one goes there, that one goes there, that one goes there. Building extra drones right now. We're going to clump up these lings and we'll run over there and see what we can scout, okay? So this guy's still just here, safe on this pillar. And these lings will be our next scout. So we don't know what's going on. We're still sticking in the build. We built an extra overlord, expecting this one to die. Hasn't happened. Oh no, God, the inefficiency. It's fine. It makes very little difference to us. Uh, we're a little slow to send this drone to our third, but that's okay. He's nearby. And, oh, let's go. It only takes two lanes to kill a marine, guys. Oh, okay, cool. All right, all right. So check this out, guys. He's gone one base hellion. Totally okay that you've got the third. Remember, your zerg third is a production facility, okay? Now, you can block this ramp with two queens. As long as they're kind of spread out a little bit. Because Hellions are kind of chunky. Kind of chunky. 
So as long as we just leave those there, we should be good. I'll, I'll, I'll try to go like this. Gonna build a few more lings just to be ready to surround. And link speed's almost done as well, so we're in a pretty good spot. Awesome. All right, overlord there. Get that overlord up there. Overlord down here. So just building a few extra overlords. Now, because it was a one base opening, you definitely want to put back on gas a little bit earlier than normal. Um, I haven't, but that's okay. And we're going to build a Rotorin. It's fine. Okay. All right, guys. We're going to go around the map and attack with those Zerglings. Because this is a one base hellbat timing, okay? So... These Lings are going to actually try and attack this from behind. And... Okay. Notice we're surrounding the uh, Marauders. Ooh, good micro by him though. He's got a very tight timing here. Alright, we're trying to bring more queens down. We've got a lot of lings in production, guys. His army is very weak. Now, I don't want to clump all the lings. We want to try to spread out and come in from multiple sides. And we're going to build roaches as well. Ooh, okay, we survived. Now, let's surround the rally if we can. Let's not. Alright, these guys are just going to go around and A-move the ramp. We're going to try and defend with everything else. So, we're building roaches and queens, okay? Roaches, queens, roaches, queens... I'm going to try and focus down the, uh... Oh my god. I actually should have focused these medevacs, I'm realizing, much earlier, guys. <laughs> this is causing me a lot of problems. Luckily, these lings coming from behind are getting very good trades. But, uh, this is definitely not the way we wanted this to go. Alright. Drones go back there, attack from both sides. Build more lings. Lings are very bad versus hellbats when they're clumped, but whenever there's only a few of them, it can kind of work out. Holy shit, well played. Well played. Very, that was such a crisp timing with the Marauders. He says, how did you know? Uh, I, I didn't. I, I didn't. I, I just just was playing safe. Uh, the, the spine was reactive. Yeah. I knew one base. Um, right? From the Hellion timing, right? So, from the Hellion timing. Third, just production structure. Thank you. GG, well played. It was a really, really very, very crisp attack. <laughs> Heck yeah, mate. It was it was really, really crisp. Uh, so, yeah, definitely uh, focusing the medevac is a bit risky. But I think in this scenario where it drags out a bit, it, it ended up costing me a bit that I didn't. Um... And I definitely think we should have backstabbed with the first lings. I kind of ummed and odd. So, check this out, guys. So, what are our reactions in this game? So, basically, we immediately send our lings across after having the Overlord push back, right? And otherwise, other than that, completely normal game, other than me building one extra Overlord early. Because whenever you think your Overlord might die, just build an Overlord in case. But the moment we see the aliens, we know it's one base. So we know the Terran is on one base. And that is key. How to defend Hellbat timings with just Queen Zergling. Now, this doesn't apply to this game. This is a one base Hellbat, right? We did defend most of it with just Queen Ling using all of these cool tips. We talk here about how basically you want to have your queens in an arc or a concave. You want to you try and spread those queens backwards. We'll talk more about that micro in a little bit. For now, let's talk about what we did. So we immediately said, hey, wait a second. Okay, God, Hellions could dart in and just run by. So I need to block my ramp. Pull the queens to the front, build two new queens to be the new injecting queens, right? And because I have a lot of vision, I don't see the Hellions, I decided to be a little risky. And I was like, if he runs in right at this moment, he might get through. But I'm basically like, cue a creep tumor back, shift hold position back on the ramp. Cue there, inject. And other than that, I'm just droning up, guys, right? That's all I did. I was just droning on up, and building more queens, injecting, and then I add a bunch of zerglings to help deal. Well, yeah, if it, it could be a alien drop, you don't know. Add a couple zerglings, but otherwise I'm still droning. So I'm being very greedy here, right? Because we're going to drone two full mineral lines, put back on gas, 
And at this point, without, I didn't even notice this. I don't think I even noticed. Actually, I did notice it soon, but not straight away. I was already thinking, hey, let's drop a Roach Warren, right? Because if he's doing a one base play, a Roach Warren just generally keeps you safe, okay? And then I look over here and I go, well, yep, def definitely we're gonna fucking drop that Roach Warren. And six aliens, well, if it's just a run by a Queenling deals with it. But if it's Hellbats, which it probably is, any defense we can get. So I'm like, Roach Warren, Queen, Spines, anything, bring the Queens together, put them on the hotkey. But I should have sent the Lings around to backstab because that means if he's microing at the front and he's got to deal with his rally getting surrounded, that's really going to make things hard for him. So I was thinking about doing that, but then because he was hitting so hard, I decided to pull back. And in hindsight, those lings would have been way more effective intercepting his reinforcements. I thought I was going to kill the marauders here, so I thought it was paying off. But we didn't quite get the surround on them. And then we kind of do. But he even does a hot pickup on one of the marauders. He does some real pro gamer micro. And I wasn't focused firing because I was focused on defensively microing my queens. If both those marauders died, I think the links around would have been worth it. But shout out to Wanky for doing some sick baller nerd micro. And uh, I suddenly realized, oh god, like I've wounded his army, but I haven't killed anything. Literally not a single unit. And I'm like, fudge me sideways. This not good. This bad. This very bad. <laughs> Whereas if those lings are intercepting these hellions, they're forcing to raise his ramp, all that sort of stuff, we're gonna be a little bit better. Yeah. Now, my Roach Warren's still not done, so I have to build more lings and more queens. I inject and bring that queen down as well. But the spine crawler is very powerful. Now, I probably should have focused the marauders with the spine crawler because they kill it very quickly. On the other hand, killing the hellbats allows the lings to clean up everything else. Now, we finally did defend and we're back to mining. And I'm like, okay, I know if I get enough roaches, we're, we're fine, because they can just focus everything down. But this was a bit of a shame, because I wanted to surround whatever was rallying across, and we took a bit too long to do it. And he pushes in, we just don't have enough roaches together yet. So I start losing a lot of these units. I should have pulled them further back up the ramp, set this rally point here, and been a little bit more cautious. Luckily, though, this is what I'm talking about with free kills. I don't need to micro this, he does, or he just loses units. So he loses two Hellions and a Marauder there without me having to do anything except 10, send 10, 15 Lings across the map. And then when we do finally collapse in with Roaches, Lings from all sides, it works out. Now, ideally, if I have enough money, I'm only going to build Roaches here. If I have a critical number of Roaches, it's all good. And then the Hellbats are just worthless. But we were in a starving gas position. We didn't really have any luxuries. So we just had to basically commit as hard as we possibly could to straight up surviving. So let's go back, guys. Was this essentially same as the dealing with Russia's one base play notes from Gold League? Scout at 3.30, check their natural. If no expansion, swap to army nest, get a bane nest. So we're swapping bane nest for Roach Horn now in the higher leagues. Roach Horn against any really committed attack, always get a Roach Horn. Uh, spore in each base. I saw Hellions, I wasn't too worried about air units coming in. I was happy to build spores reactively. This is obviously the noob checklist. We're at a higher level now, we're doing things a bit more reactively. Um, try and try to scout what they're doing. You know, Overlord Sacrifice, Ling Scout. So what time did we actually see those Hellions coming across the map? Uh, was it 3.20? 3.30? Something like that? It was pretty early, man. And you know, I had for the most part droned up to this point. I built an extra queen on top of what I normally would have built by this point, And I built... Uh, eight extra zerglings but other than that it's very similar to what we were doing in the in the in the lower leagues right and then i see the attack come out 330 340 i'm like okay let's make fighting units now well what if this build becomes common what if this happens to me more than one in a hundred hundred times i can just add the spine crawler guys when i see the hellion opening i can just be like okay build a spine crawler if i already had a spine crawler up when he comes up here it's a game changer that plus the ling backstab easy peasy and that's it if you want to build a safety spine versus a one base player not a bad idea not a bad idea man okay guys we're hoping into a zerg versus zerg by the way um but we had a you know someone was saying oh i scout but i don't know what to do with the info so i just want to reiterate this analogy many of you would have heard many times from me some of you might not have so i like repeating it uh you need a game plan you need a build if you're indecisive thank you mate Good luck, have fun. Uh, if you're indecisive or, you know, you don't know what to do with scouting information, you find it all overwhelming, you're just kind of looking at things, you don't know what to do. The important thing is to have structure in your play. 
And that is where having a build comes in. A build is not you do this, then you do this, then you do this, every game, always. A build is a game plan. And yeah, maybe up to like 20 supply, 30 supply even. It happens pretty much the same way every single game. But from there, as you get better at a build, you're going to learn many different reactions based on what's happening. And think of those as what starts as a bare tree trunk. That it's solid. You've learned a build. You've learned a standard path for doing things. But it has no complexity. It has no adjustments, right? And then over time... Let's cancel that gas. Sorry, we don't need that. Over time, you're going to take that and add all these little branches. How do I adapt to Reapers? Oh, what if they add muters? Uh, what if I'm worried about this? What if I want to... Okay, what are some kill timings I can do off it? That's a little branch. And then if it doesn't work, you go back to this. Or this is how I can add some anti-air defense. And uh, that's going to cost me a lot of minerals. So I need to build extra drones in order to adapt for that. And, you know, you start to build this, like, complex interweaving list of, of adaptations and reactions and details that simply make it a much better style and make you a much better StarCraft player. Um, and, and it's not, you know, people, people think of it in terms of, like, oh, so I, when I start playing, I need to know all those different responses. No. You start a build, you have a really simple game plan. Me hit Roach Attack this time, and that's it. And you're just like, ah, yeah. you, you do your opening, you do your Roach Attack. And then at, once you've got that down, so it's settled into your muscle memory a little bit, you start to focus more on, okay, some of these games I lose. <clears throat> Why do I lose these games? Like, what, what, what's going wrong in this game? What's going wrong in that game? You know, okay, I think I need to learn a reaction in this situation, right? Oh, extra overlord is needed. Forgot it, guys. A little bit late on this bad boy. Ah! That's all right. Two things going across the scout. Um, yeah, and, and you learn that, and you can learn it reactively. We're like, well, I literally wait till I die to something, and only then do I even think about what I need to do in that circumstance. And that's totally fine. Remember, we don't build a reactive spine, <coughs> reactive spine anymore, guys. <coughs> okay, he had two queens at the front, so we can't really run in there. Try and block his third if we can. All right, we're going to just queue them to run around. Lair. Inject, inject. Extra overlord uh, on this side. Extra overlord there. Remember 330, we want to go for double evo roach horn, right? Okay. I didn't really see anything. Uh, looks like a gasless wall off, similar to what I'm doing though, guys. So that's cool. This should be interesting, right? Um, oh, we weren't quite at 12 workers on the natural, so that's a little bit early, guys. That's all right. Put the creep tumor on the outside so it doesn't block any rewalling that we have to do. And that's an Evo, I imagine. That's a Baneling, uh, a Roach Horn. But we'll confirm. Yeah, okay. So it's similar build to what I'm doing, guys. Uh, he's not taken a third, interestingly. <clears throat> Let's get that Spire. And notice we can see the Overlords. <clears throat> so we're going to check those bad boys to see if any of those are... <clears throat> if any of those are, are morphing. Oh shit, I forgot to make my upgrades, guys. Plus one starts. Roach speed starting. Not having that upgrade morphing is definitely a problem. Now, notice he's moving in with this Overlord, guys. I'm going to let him come a little bit closer before I show that my queens have spotted him, okay? Just a little bit closer. There we go. See, now he's in the kill zone. And you want to move, shoot, move, shoot, move, A move. I don't know if we'll kill him or not, but we can at least get pretty close. Spires two thirds done, so we're gonna build the third hatch and overlords now, guys. Whoa! Okay, uh, build a few more rochis right now. All right, muters, muters, muters. Oh my god, I was not expecting an Idus all in, guys. Woo! Okay, but I've got that that ring of vision. Because we're denying our opponent's vision, 
We're also playing much safer. Let's break that Evo. Um, I'm going for Mutas, which I want to go clean up the Overlords. He's trying to take a third now, but I think he's probably still committed pretty hard to this attack, guys. So I'm going to keep building Roaches for now, because um, this could still hit me, right? So we're going to send these Mutas out. Notice we're going to send one Muta. We're going to Alt Zero. And that Muta is literally shift q to just A-move the entire right side of the map and catch any Overlords coming in over there. Now I'm going to build a few drones for that base, but not too many. My Roach is going to be chilling. There it is. Because, if you think about it, guys, they've committed a lot to this Nidus Worm. They need to they need to get it up. And, uh, you know, I mean, we, we've all seen, you know, desperate guys that need to get it up before, but I'm telling you, this this is really desperate for him. So, um... Alright, let's kill that. Now, there's Roach Ravager coming across the map. So... <clears throat> I've got a decent roach count though. I think on the defense, I think we're okay. Because remember, he committed to the Nidus very early. So, I don't know if he has like upgrades, try to run the drones away. And you can see like my roach army was actually pretty big. I only built like four or five drones for my third. Because you've already blocked the Nidus, you just need to keep blocking the Nidus, right? That's all you need to do in this sort of game. And um, that's why we split off that one vacuum cleaning mutilisk you know when you just go line by line and you're vacuum cleaning vacuuming a room or mopping the floor or something like that maybe call it like the mop up the mop up mutilisk is what we could call it i guess all right so he's trying to make hydras but he doesn't have an answer to the roaches which is actually my main focus right now and Hydras don't do good versus Roaches, unless you've got a very large army. Lots of Roaches of your own to buffer, that sort of stuff. And we're trying to just hold position these Roaches so they just kill drones, because we've already got enough on top of the rally. Just get into the mineral lines and do it. Cool, good build, guys. Yeah, lawn, lawn mowing. Yeah, lawn mowing. Um, I guess I haven't mowed that many lawns in my life. Like, I used to do it as a kid, and I hated it. I did anything I could to get out of mowing lawns. I would, I would vacuum or, <clears throat> you know, wash dishes or anything else that I, I could do instead as chores would be much more preferred. I hated it. We even for a while had one of those, you guys ever have one of the, the man-powered mowers where it's literally you just have to shove it and the, the thing rolls around purely through manpower? Because I feel like most people have, have you obviously used the, like the petrol one or, or you know, and shit like that and stuff, but... uh. Or like the the big drive on one, the dream. But uh, the, the the crappy mower is oh my god, it's so so exhausting, man. The ride on mowers are such an example of the opulence of our our life these days. It's actually wild to me that like everyday people have it. So yeah, guys, check it out. He was on only thirty one drones. 31 drones so no plus one no roach speed if i scouted a bit better i could have noticed the evo chamber wasn't wobbling so there was a really big tell that my opponent was doing something cheeky and that was the evo chamber wasn't wobbling so what i could have done guys if i moved this evo chamber in there and saw no upgrade that would be like oh he's either playing muters or nidus worm one or the other those are the two two base options your opponent has right could be like a weird Ling Flood, I guess, but you know, very unlikely. Whereas there's a reason why I'm starting plus one range every game nice and early to really convince my opponent, like, hey, I'm upgrading. Look, now my Roach Horn's wobbling. Look at that. Look at that little Roach poking his head in and out. You see, it's kind of under the symbol. It's kind of hard to see right now. You can you can barely see his little mandibles popping up because this this game heart uh, overlay is showing this up. But uh, yeah, there's, there's a little Roach in there poking his head in and out. He does that when it's upgrading a little bit faster and the whole thing kind of wobbles a bit more. But uh, yeah, I, I, this is something I learned after many times stopping a Nidus Worm and dying to a follow-up Nidus Worm, was basically just send a Mutalisk. If your Mutas go down one side of the map, send a Mutalisk to patrol and make sure nothing sneaks down the other side and try to expand that ring of vision to make sure the Nidus doesn't get up. Because if he did Nidus here, 12 Roaches, 3 Queens pop out inside my base versus my 5 Roaches, I'm probably dead. So this was a really good all-in. But what's awesome, you might be like, Pig, I can't be this paranoid about stopping Nidus Worms and having vision everywhere. That's part of our build. We're trying to deny him from scouting our Spire. 
which makes us more solid versus Nidus Worm because of that. Now, he still could pop it out here. We, we, if we give up the third, that's fine. With how fast this Nidus was hitting, anything like five minutes or earlier, I would say, assume they're skipping all their upgrades. It's a crazy committed Nidus. Um, I know this was like a bit later. This is like 520 or something like that, 510. But anything, anything before then, you just basically just want to be like, no, 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 no. Get out of here, mate. I, I don't need a third base. Cancel that if we need to, if you feel the urgency to, if you think you can spend the money on other stuff that'll help you and just shut down the Nidus. Yeah. If I'm the one doing the Nidus, is it okay to pop inside? It's ideal. If you can sneak inside their base. I thought that was a sneaky scout. I didn't realize that was a sneaky Nidus. If they don't have vision on the edge, perfect. Your overlord has the same vision as their overlord. So if you come in, put your overlord here and you can't see an enemy overlord you know you can put the nidus worm down and they won't be able to see it right so that's a great way to do it if you go out like this this is a very risky move for Auden. but if they were able to pull it off uh it could have been very effective unfortunately for them i reacted very quickly i didn't micro my drones well i could have sent those guys or at least a few to attack it from the top but my roaches were nearby so it didn't matter so Bit of a gamble for Auden. I do think it would have been better if Auden popped it in the main because there's more likelihood of the roaches being in the natural, which means they have to run up there. More chance of you getting it up a little bit further from these drones to pull as well. But uh, it's good stuff, man. It's good stuff. Anyways, all right, guys. Last game for today. We're going to be playing players a little bit lower. So let's really take this time to once again reiterate the basics uh, that we've kind of been glossing over as we focus on all the adjustments. Let's talk you guys through the build start to finish and really just you know cement in these changes because if you do make this change and you absolutely don't need to swap to these builds it's going to take a while to learn it'll take you a lot of time to get used to um a lot of practice so just be be chill take your time and just remember it's all about making it like tying your shoelaces and since you, the early flow is quite different without the drone scout it does change things it changes things a lot and you should be expecting yourself to kind of fumble around a little bit until you give yourself enough repetitions to get comfortable with it and a lot of people i think get demotivated like that by that with starcraft they're like ah oh, no you know it's like two steps forward one step back and uh the thing is well you know if, if you're not motivated enough to relearn your opening don't worry keep drone scouting harass with it a little bit more block their command center attack the scv building you know you can go ahead and do all that uh, you can absolutely get gm drone scouting every game um i'm just trying to show you guys different options a little bit more and you know, really, uh, really lean into that. And I know a lot of people would be upset if I never show this style without, uh, a little bit of, a little bit of, uh, a little bit less scouting, you know? Alright, Overlord's there. Uh, we're having a big discussion in chat about how onions are the best. And they just make everything better. Any savory food is better with onions. This is so true. Alright. And the onions for us is going to be this lovely third base, which he's about to block. We can see the SCVs hanging around, guys. It's alright. We're just droning. Make Ling speed. Just continue the build. So we're going to attack him, and we're going to rally our Lings across the map. Oh. Okay. Oh, well, maybe not. Where's that Reaper? Oh, he's in my base. Okay. Run. Spore Crawler? We're in Masters. We can do Spore Tricks now, right, guys? Remember? ZVT, so you want to put the Creep Tumor down. And that third hatchery was already quite delayed, so let's build it. Queued up a few more drones since I was distracted there. This Queen moves up. Is he still hanging out in here? Finally, he leaves. All right. Let's get uh, Latifa on the way. Let's get another Overlord out over here. Put that nice and far up so we can see those Hellions coming ahead of time. And ooh, looks like that Marine came out. But we're going to queue this Overlord to go for that scout. Remember, ZVP, we might be a bit happier to just send the Overlord through at the start. But against Terran, we need that scouting a little bit later in the game. Uh, which is why, of course, we scout later on with that overlord so we're gonna steer around the marine a little bit which i'm sure already looks like it went back into the base but it is what it is all right guys it's 3 30 so just grab those three three guys put them back on gas just shift click them if they try to mine from the wrong side and keep building queens non-stop why because we are saturated on two base which means you basically just build queens non-stop so we're rallying to our third we've got these lings chilling back here 
Now, if you find you really hate, the Hellions are in your face, you feel like the, the Terran's all over you this whole early game, every game, start doing things like just hide the Lings up off on the side and do a backstab with it, okay? But uh, if you're okay, you know, you feel, ah, oh, no, it's fine, it's doing okay, you don't need to do it. Now, no add-on on the starboard tells us it's either a Medivac for a drop or a Liberator, could be a Viking, but there's no tech lab there as well, two reactors. So that just tells us to build spores. So we should chuck spores down right now. No, that's rookie shit, guys. Are you guys rookies? Are you rookies? No, you're not. You're very good Starcraft players. You pay attention to timing and you know you never need a spore crawler before. Four minutes 30 for every single type of harassment. Now we could skip it on the natural if we want. If we see a liberator, we'll build it, but otherwise we'll skip that, yeah? I think that's a good idea. Okay. Oh, shizzle fizz. He does have aliens here. I didn't build Zerglings yet. Now that's because I didn't see any aliens. The moment I saw aliens, I was going to start adding a few more Zerglings. As long as I keep these queens in a pretty central position, we should be okay. I notice I've been pulling every queen to the front. Remember, that's the way we do it in ZVT. Because we're building seven, eight queens every game. We always want to do it like that. Now we've got plenty of lings there. And it is a liberator, guys. <laughs> I think he's going to siege it from the front because we saw that coming from a bit of a weird angle. And I'm micring my queens on my minimap, central location. Oh! Oh! You naughty little bugger. Where are you? What the, what the fuck is... Nah. Okay, he's getting a bit too fancy here. Alright. Throat poker. That kind of sounds really dirty, guys. Is it just me? Gases? Are we taking more? Uh, we're going to take more because we're kind of slow on them, I think. Second gas, Baneling Nass. And because we shut down his pressure, guys, we can go straight to the next stage. So we're going to do everything, everywhere, all at once. No, we're not. That's dumb. Don't don't ever break build order, guys. Cancel those gases. Cancel those gases. Don't do not do that. That's a really bad uh, habit to fall into. Take the fourth. Great movie, by the way. We're doing all of our normal transition in the exact same order as normal. We're not going to make things really hard for ourselves. Why would we do that, guys? Now, we've got... Guess what, guys? We've got four, five hatcheries up. Now we can take all the gases and start that next step. So five gases, remember, because it's ZVT. These guys can go here. Now, we've overdroned these bases a little bit. We're up to 70. It's normally meant to be 63. It's a little higher than normal. That's okay. We're going to make Bane speed. Put some Ling Scouts out. See what he's up to. I'm also going to put a few more Overlords on the edges. Far out of the map. Just to spot drops way ahead of time. Now you might wonder, well, why are you doing that, Pig? And it's a good question. The reason is because I feel... Let's spread this creep. I feel that uh, he hasn't gone a Viking, so I'd like to see things further. But if you do that from the start of the game by default, things aren't going to go your way. You're going to be feeding overlords for the death. But if we're like, ah, we haven't really seen any Vikings out, it's past that point, seven minutes onwards, let's put a few more overlords out on the far edges of the map and see what we can do, okay? Make a few Banelings for safety. How many Banelings do you make? Uh, at most half of your Zerglings, guys. It's up to you to develop a game sense for it. Um, verse masters of tanks. Banelings aren't good. Verse masters of Widowmans. Banelings aren't good. They're very good versus marines. They're very good versus hellbats. They can do well versus clumped up Widowmans as well. But these are important things to keep in mind is you can adapt it based on how you're playing. You can play a handful of Banelings and just mass circling. It's going to be really bad versus mass mass marine or mass mass hellbat. But if they're heavy on the marauders and the tanks and stuff, heavier on the zerglings is not a bad way to do it. Inject, inject, inject. More Zerglings. All right, guys, let's get that Ling Bane run by ready. He's going to push the left side of the map through his third base towards my bases. And we want to hit his natural. We always want to hit the natural. You guys know that. So you always do it. Pathogen glands. I'm going to make a few Infestors straight away, even before that's ready, guys. And you're going to notice, even with this Infestor style, we are rarely getting to a position where we need to really use the Infestors. Um, and that's just because it's only at a very high level of play. Let's go, sorry, let's be a bit more organized with the creep right to left. It's only at a much higher level of play where people are able to really contest you in a macro game if you're doing things correctly. Let's also transfer. We've had a few extra workers on these bases for a while. Inject, inject, inject. All right, let's make more Banelings. He's really turtling, guys. So I think we should be making an Overseer to just kind of see, hey, what are you doing? Let's, you know... Take a little look. Send this guy forward. Interesting. Alright, we're going to make as many Banelings as we can up here. 
And when this army attacks from the left, those guys will try to attack from the right. Don't know if it'll work, but always a good idea. Now remember, whenever you're going to expand, always take two bases at once. We're only at 69 drones. And normally I say, hey, you can go up to 80 drones on Massling Bane, right? Just give yourself, like, unlimited units. Well, why haven't I done that this game? The reason is very simple. I keep waiting for him to attack and it's just not happening. Is he playing mech? What is going on in this game? All right, I've seen a lot of Liberators, so we're going to make a uh, Spire or a Hydrodent. I think Spire. And let's do it, guys. Let's um, roll these in. I can see there's a wall off, so let's grab some Banelings. And then the other guys are going to attack from the other side. Wait, what? Did those guys not blow up the depot? Oh, I think a Widow Mine might have taken it out. Okay, those guys are running in. These guys, get in there, guys. Oh, my lord. All right, we're going to go in for a big surround. Spread the lings, spread the lings. Get in, get in, get in. Looking around, looking around, trying to assert. What's happening? What's happening? Click the command center. If he doesn't lift it, we can get it. All right, we can just break out now. Try and escape a little bit. Take out those depots as well. Maybe kill the gas. Okay. Inject, inject, inject. Cue some injects on these. Build more Zerglings. We can make a hive. So what are we going to do, guys? More Zerglings. We're going to get some Corruptors to deal with the Liberators. Could go Hydras if you want, but obviously they can't fight back versus uh, Corruptors, Liberators, when they're sieged up, which is why we're doing that. Um, I think just like eight Liberators is a lot. We're going to go eight Liberators anyway. Um, we also knew there was Widow Mines, which we didn't deal with. So let's make Overlord Speed. Make some Overseers. And oh, where did that come from? Guys, when you're surprised, what do we do? Same as always. Grab a bunch of units. Oh, send those across the map. Alt, so we alt seven of them. More lings, more banes. These guys are going across. Try to get them up the ramp before he raises it. That's how you win games. Some lings ran into the base as well. I think maybe he has that base. We'll split a few lings there. So you have the wall up. Try to break the, the depot down if you can. And this is where infestors are really good, guys. A move. And if he's clumped, you notice we're just kind of boxing units, getting them on top of the tanks. Just so everything doesn't clump too hard. GG, well played. Crash played a pretty good game. You, know, you can't you can't leave before I get my satisfaction, my friend. Now, I got a bit confused with my control groups, guys, because my Corruptors overrode my Infestor key, and I needed to make a decision there. So what I would normally do is Corruptors would just go on my main army key. I like to have a very simple two army control group system. Corruptors on the main army and Infestors with that uh, as, a, as a secondary key. If the Infestors just become a backup caster that I'm not really focusing on at all, maybe they can just get mixed into my army key, and then the Corruptors can be separate hunting drops down or something like that. And... Sometimes people get overwhelmed. They go, I've got, but then they unload Marines, Corruptors can't shoot down. You can do it like this. There's like drops everywhere. You can literally say, this is my Corruptor Lingbane drop defense squad. It's not the cleanest, but it's fine. It'll get the job done. That'll, that'll, that'll clean up the drops. And obviously Adrenal, 3-3 three, three guys. We can go Vipers if there's lots of tanks. We can go Ultras. I think just staying Lingbane and then potentially going Ultras is the simplest one size fits all solution. Um, and that works really well. No roaches? Not with the Ling Bane style. Heck no. <clears throat> you gotta uh, you gotta focus on one style. If you're a Ling Bane player, you're a Ling Bane player. <clears throat> the only time you'd go roaches is if we're playing versus mech. Uh, which we did a lot in some of the other previous shows. But uh, but in this one, no. Queens make you invincible, says Katz. Yeah, queens are super good guys. So we've been trying to basically go queen, 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 queen. And this has been the big adjustment from Diamond to Masters. In Diamond... We were defending with Lingbane and a few queens, right? We, we, when Diamond, we started adding a bit of creep and a couple of queens, right? But now it's like, hey, look at this, guys. We're at eight queens by the five minute mark every single game, which is kind of wild, right? That's that's pretty sick, but it works out very nicely. Now, he tried to do a, a very clever maneuver with the Liberator. 
bypassing me, but I was really ready for it because I saw a starport with no add-on. I knew there was a Liberator or something like that. Didn't see any Viking cleaning up overlords, didn't see a medevac drop. If it was a medevac, same thing, same thing. I'm looking at the edges, I've got those spores on the edges, so I'm keeping my eyes open, right? And always pulling our queens back to a nice central location and keeping an eye on the minimap. You see the Hellions come in, you A-move the queens towards those Hellions on the minimap, and we keep these Zerglings in reserve, right? If the Hellions try to run past, the net of Zerglings deals with them, and that works out really well. So you really just want to keep in mind, this is a different way of playing. And the queens are slow, and it's going to be something that takes time to get used to. If you guys are playing Zerg vs. Terran and you're just relying on Ling Bane smashing into aliens or anything like that, that's fine. And you can even do that to GM. There's GM Zergs, especially more aggressive ones that do that. Because I'm showing you guys more of a macrocentric style, we're learning the more technical defensive style, which is an amazing style because it can go into any style. This solid eight queen, queen Zergling opening, it's rock solid. So what's, what's the difference from here though? Compared to my last bronze to GM, I was telling you how to kill them. Timing attack into another timing attack into another timing attack. Just kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. And don't get me wrong, I will argue that is a better way to ladder up in StarCraft quickly. If you guys watch the builds I was doing in my previous Masters 3 Bronze to GM Zerg, those builds will get you a lot of victories. And I heard from a lot of people saying, oh my god, I'm ranking up so fast. Oh my god, I got Masters 3 for the first time. Oh, I got Masters 2. I got Masters 1. Oh my god, your aggressive builds are so good. I'm doing them in Diamond League and steaming through Diamond League. It's crazy. Um, they're great build orders, they are, but I want to show you guys something different. So we're showing you how to swarm your opponent with kind of positional, all-consuming Ling Bane play. And it is a bit harder, it's a bit more technical. But as long as we keep doing backstabs regularly and uh, we always kind of answer their aggression with a backstab wherever possible, that sort of stuff, I do think you will find that you can uh, make it feel like a very fair matchup, a very fun matchup. And... I say may maybe make it feel a bit unfair for your opponent. If you can just produce, man, all these hatcheries. And I know some people are probably still going to go, building this many hatcheries is so bad. You're such a peasant pig. Lambo would scoff at this. Serral would scoff at this double macro hatchery in the main. Doing this at bro level is not viable. There is a world champion named Dark who would have something to say to you. He builds this double macro hatch almost every Zerg vs. Terran when he's playing Ling Bane. He goes to seven hatcheries very early. And it's part of the secret of his success is that he misses more injects than any other pro Zerg player, especially in Zerg vs. Heron. But he's frigging good at pulling those queens to defend. He's great at microing his defense. And the fact that he misses some injects doesn't matter because if you give him even 20 seconds of freedom, he does this. Dumps injects on his macro hatches. They produce lava nonstop for the last five minutes. Remember guys, if you don't remember to do that, you might struggle with your lava. But if you drop, like I just did eight injects on each of these hatcheries, they're going to non-stop produce lava for the next 10 minutes of this game. You're going to have so much. So Dark is a beast, man. And he does the double macro hatch and you can as well. It also just gives you a bit more room for error. Game gets messy. You're losing a few hatcheries. It's okay. I've got extra hatcheries in the main. I could rebuild. I can, I can kind of bounce back from it. So it's not as perfect, but I think that's good for us as regular human players. Normally, I wouldn't say copy much of what Dark does, but that one thing that he does is fantastic. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Bronze to GM. Um, we're into Masters, and uh, already you can see there's a lot more depth at play. Next week, we're basically just going to be doing the same stuff, but it's all about the situations we encounter and just leveling it up and really getting more settled in terms of scouting and reacting in the correct way. We had that Zerg vs. Protoss base trade where I scouted the Colossus really late. So we've got to remember things like scouting Lair immediate Overseer scout. That has to happen more often. Um, you know, uh, ZVZ, uh, we let our opponent surprise us with a big, big pack of mutalisks, um, cause we were too distracted by, by Ling harassment, right? So we could have cleaned up that follow up and just made sure we're a little bit tighter on those, uh, situations. And as long as we're learning from them, we'll do well, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope I didn't play too spammy and fast utilizing my mechanics. And, uh, I look forward to catching you guys in the next episode of Bronze to GM. Thanks for watching.